welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Ellie Kempster. And me, Liam Underwood. In this episode, we're going to be talking about... I've forgotten the name. Spider-Man. Is it, is it just Spider-Man or is it like Marvel's Spider-Man? I don't know. The Spider-Man game. You've all seen it. You've all heard about it. It's on PlayStation 4. Game. Yeah. I don't know if everyone has seen it. People don't really pay attention to video game stuff if they're not I think gamers. I, I think it's surprising. I've seen a lot of people who have bought PS4s as the first console they've ever bought to play this game. Amanda, have you heard of the Spider-Man game? Let us know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're going to be talking all about that. Uh, we'll give you the highs, lows. We've both played it. We've both completed it. We've completed it in different ways, but we've both completed it. Yeah. We've completed it in the ways we agreed upon, and obviously you've gone beyond that. Understandably, I'm not annoyed. That makes sense. Yeah, but don't try and make it. Don't try and downplay what I've done. I also completed the game. Well, you've you completed part of the game. I completed most of the whatever. We'll get to it. <laughs> First, it's time for catching up with Ellie and Liam. Um, we, I don't know. There's not really a good reason why we just haven't recorded for about a month. This episode is no, super duper late. This is very late. We've sort of. Uh, it's all just gone to tits. Yeah, we're, we're back we're, now. Right, we're back now. We've got some great stuff planned for you for the rest of the year. Um, <laughs> Listen, so... you can't see the the little shrug and face that Liam pulled there, but it was uh, it was not convincing. We've no, we have. We've got great stuff planned for you for the rest we of have. the year. We've got loads of like themed episodes coming up. That's going to be exciting, probably. Liam loves themes. I love a theme. Uh, our next episode is going to be a Halloween special. We've got the Nerd on Nerd anniversary special coming up. Ellie's going to surprise yeah. us with some amazing culture swap thing for that. Yep, yeah, my turn um, to do an idea. I've got my birthday special coming up. I've been really racking my brains for what I could do for it, and I'm I don't have a clue. I'm going to be honest. Uh, let me let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to pick something really mean. Then in the episode, you'll be like, "This is revenge for all the horrible things you make me no, do." But you haven't made me like, do anything horrible. Nice. Yeah, that's why. Like, I'm I'm struggling to think of something. Because we did High School Musical 2 last year, I believe, for my birthday special. Yes, probably. I don't want to do High School Musical 3 just yet. I want to give you like a little break. No, like, I think that's a, that would be a cop-out if you were to just keep do High School Musical. Exactly. So I don't know what to do. Okay. I'm at, I'm at a... <sighs> well, you've got, you got time, mate. Yeah. Then we've got Christmas. Yep, I love Christmas. Then we've got the New Year Roundup. And then, starting off in the New Year, we're going to actually get back on top of this podcast. We'd, we'd, we'll technically be on top of it for the rest of yeah, this year. Yeah, but I mean, like, having guests come on, because... Oh, yeah, yeah. The... Well, we've got some stuff in the pipeline that's, like, ideas. Ideas are floating, Liam. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. But my favourite episodes are the ones where we have guests on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones where you don't have to talk to me, I know. But no, it's not only that, but it's also, I think... I'm just going to toot our own horn a little bit here. Okay. I think one of the strengths of our podcast is how nicely tailored it is to guests. Like, yeah, the catching yeah. up with is a great opportunity to get to know like an, an, a new guest or a returning guest. The culture swap is another great way to get to kind of experience what gets their juices flowing. The only bit that really the guest can't join in is housekeeping. Yeah. Otherwise, the show is pretty nicely structured for them, I think. All right. Stop blowing your own dick. It's big enough. So, <laughs> it's time to catch up. What have you been up to? A Nick? month. With a month of content. I'm going to cheat. Yeah, I, I mean, mine's just going to be a normal catching up with, with not a whole lot of stuff in it. Just yeah. One big thing and that's it. I've had something I've been waiting to talk about for like a month. And I've done other stuff this weekend, but I'll talk about that next time. Okay. So who wants to go first? Shall I go first? Shall I get, I'll get mine out of the way, then you can... Now, just... yours is recent though. Let me get mine out of the way because that happened ages ago. Okay. Okay. I don't mind, Liam. <laughs> Fine. No, you, I've thought Why did you through. even bother? Up? You're right. Liam, I've what have you been through. up to? Right. A month ago with work... I had to go to what is called a communication and culture workshop. Yep. I, I, you have told me that this happened. Yep. So, I don't know how much I told you of what happened. I don't think, to be fair, I don't think a whole lot. I think we had a, a small chat about it when it was happening. Yeah, possibly. Um, so, you might be wondering, hey, what is a communication and culture workshop? Oh, I'm assuming it's they pick the most problematic members of staff and just sort of send them away to learn. No. We have, in our team now, 340 yeah. people. Okay, that's quite a lot. They're putting every single person through this workshop in the team. Yeah. At a cost of about half a million dollars. Total or each? Total. Okay. Which, to me, is a ludicrous amount of money to waste on this. 
Yeah. Because now that I've been through the, the communication and culture workshop, I can confirm it is a waste. Okay. <laughs> so the first task of the day, you get there, it starts at like, it was half eight in the morning or some bullshit. Yeah, that's early. I, yeah, I hated it. Because you also, it also wasn't in the office. It was in a hotel away from yeah. the office. Because part of it is they want you to switch off from actual work stuff and just spend time with your work colleagues. Wonderful. But it's not just the colleagues you work with. It's like because we're all these different groups that have been merged together, it's a selection of people from each group. Okay. And we had some Got people you. from Asia that were flown over as well. Wow. Yeah. Just to enough. spice things up, I guess. One of the guys, bless him, could hardly speak English. So anytime you want to communicate with him, you'd have to talk into his phone, which would translate to him, and then he'd talk into his phone, which would translate to you. Fair, fair enough. That's, but you know, uh... communication and culture. Yep, good good workshop. So the first task, what do you think this workshop is going to be? You have to write on a post-it note. Oh, you, and... this is a question that they asked you. Yep, you have to write on a post-it note and stick it on a wall. So I'm going to ask you, because honestly, that's all the information we got. This is a communication and culture workshop. Don't bring your work laptop. Be yeah. here at eight thirty. That's everything. So what how would long? You... How long did this thing last? Two like, days. Was it multiple. Two days. Two days. Uh, so my guess would be it's icebreaker games for two days. Okay. I wrote to yeah. communicate more effectively with people from different backgrounds. Oh my god! Yeah. So you. Th- yeah. Right. I don't think that's right. But... Oh, it wasn't. No, it was not right. Um... No. Did you have to put your name on it or anything? No. Was it? Did people? Okay. So people no. didn't go. Oh Jesus. Yeah. So, the next task, right? Yep. So, everyone sat around a table with, like, people that they generally knew. They were like, okay, we're going to put you out of your comfort zone. Go and sit somewhere with people that you majority don't know. Now, I've been working at this, this place for five and a half years now. And you, I assume you're like me and don't know many people at all. No, I actually know probably three quarters of the people in the room. Oh, look at you. But I, little office. I also was like, look, I know this is kind of one of the things where you have to, like, because all of the managers were there as well, and most of the managers are going to each one of these workshops. Got you. So I was like, I'm just going to rip the rip the plaster slash band aid, Amanda. Rip that off, nice and fast. Yep. I went straight to the manager's table, which they were all sat at. I was just like, I'm just going to get this over with. Sat down with with all the managers and uh, the Asian guy that couldn't speak any English, which I didn't know. Perfect. At the time. I love it. So, one of the managers is the guy that I was working with for about three months. I yep. was like, I hate everything that you're doing and completely changed my job to get away from him. Yep, yep. There's another manager that I half work with at the moment. Uh, their manager was there. So we're talking like yep. t- essentially three levels up the chain from who I report to now. Yep, yep. Um, a random guy who I didn't know and the Asian guy. I love it. It's a, it's a bold move. I wonder if everyone in the room was just looking at you like, holy shit, what is he doing? Uh, that's what I was thinking. Like, if I was like having an out of body experience, I was like, the bull's on this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, first, the first sort of task once you'd moved, you had to buddy up with someone on the table. Please say you picked the guy that couldn't speak English. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and you had to draw a portrait of him. Okay. Now, I I didn't realise um, how long it would take. What I'm going to do is just just for you to see. You'll want to edit this. Yeah. I, I'm going to do now the portrait that I drew for him because I can remember it. Okay, so you did like really simple. Yeah, I'm just going to just gonna quickly... Uh, he had glasses on, so I put the glasses on. I gave him a little ear there. Uh, some hair This is like going to look that. like a small child's drawing. All right, I'm now going to... Right, so that's, that's about as long as it took me to draw this picture. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to yep. show you how it looked. Yep, fair enough. That was it. What's... Going on with the bottom of his face there, where his chin should be. Uh, yeah, I just didn't really join it up very well. I think I did do a better no. job on the day, but okay. marginally. I gave him a little teeny I tiny I like that you fixed in. it for me. Yeah, thank you, Liam. That's much better. So, honestly, it took me, what, about 20 seconds? Because I, yeah, I, yeah. So I, I didn't realise I didn't realise yeah. you had to spend time. So then I'm just sat there awkwardly while this guy stares at me, drawing me. Yeah, and you look like an arsehole because you've just drawn this pathetic little oh, oh, it was so pathetic. drawing. It was so pathetic. I can't like, You know those little... You know when you get um those primary school tea towels where like all the kids have drawn all their classmates? Yeah. That's what yours looks like. But yeah. worse. Because yeah, they have bodies usually. I know. It honestly took me all of 30 seconds. I yeah. didn't realise this task was meant to take five minutes. 
So I had to sit there for four and a half minutes while he just stared and drawed. I've sent you a picture. Don't don't read the text if you can, but you can okay. see the drawing that he did of me. He nailed okay. the lips. I will put this on our on our Twitter account. Okay, just uh, opening it up. Right, don't read the text. I'll just look at the picture. He has done the, those lips are accurate. That's, that's, I mean, that's actually like it's pretty simple still. It's, I'm not going to give him. It's not crazy good. No, but it's pretty and, accurate. And Considering that took him all of five minutes, I was like, come on, mate. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's fair. I think that's a good job. He did a good job. He made me look almost like a superhero. Like, the, the chin is very yeah. strong. Yes. And the jawline. But anyway, um, I just thought this was like a an icebreaker, get to know the other person. I thought we'd essentially have to do this with... I imagined we'd be going around the room and having to do this with everyone. So I was like, I won't take long. It doesn't matter. I can't everyone. really Everyone. You thought they were going to... You thought you well, were not like every like single person, but I thought, pictures. I thought you'd have to do it like a few times. Right, there were you. about 35 to 40 people there. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't right. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, because they're doing it in different locations, so it's not like all 330 in one. Yeah, got you. Every, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that once you've drawn the picture, you then had to just like ask them their name. Yep. That was a challenge. You're having to do all this into his phone. <laughs> yeah, and also he's... He's got a name that I don't know if I'm pronouncing right, but it's like Zhenzing. Okay. But spelt in a way that doesn't make sense for how it's it sounds out. But yeah, it doesn't make sense in phonetic English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was a whole new fun challenge. And then you had to put what your um, job role is and what like group you work for. Okay. Which I ended up just writing it down for him because he was struggling. That's fair. Yeah. So that was the, the first part of that. I'll okay, admit... so you're off to a bad start. I am. I really am. Half I thought at it's... this point of the managers, like, looked over and gone, what's Liam doing? No, not yet. Okay. Does that happen? <laughs> oh, good. Carry on. Here's the thing that I didn't realise. Yep. This picture would be so important to the whole workshop. Oh, really? Mm. <laughs> Every... is, this is an essential thing that you've just done, and you've spent yep. ten seconds... So the way the workshop it. works is you'll have a task on, like, a table... And then you'll move to a different table with a different group of people. And the first yep. thing you had to do every single time was show them the picture. So this poor bastard <laughs> has had to spend two days. And we had to swap tables like eight times. Just going around and showing people this childlike joy. <laughs> it was terrible. It's really bad. Yeah. So obviously the first task is he has to show oh all of the managers <laughs> this like bullshit drawing that I've done <laughs> while I'm just sat there like a pleb. <laughs> I love how immediately this has gone wrong. <laughs> you, you did such a you you made such a bold decision to go to that table. <laughs> And it's just immediately all gone wrong. Yeah. So, um, okay. Oh, fuck. That's so good. Yeah. Oh. So, that that was awkward. Now, I skipped ahead a little bit, I'll be honest. Before you had to show everyone the picture that, that you'd drawn, yep. you had to write down some things. And the way yep. it was pitched was just, all right, just write this down next to, your, next to your picture. Don't stress too much about it. Don't spend too much time thinking about it. Just just write down. The first thing that you had to write down was um, your personal value. Okay. I don't know what that means. No, that's... Yeah. So what would you write down in that situation? I'm curious. I mean, to be honest with you, Liam, I'd probably just write I'm transgender on the page and then any time anyone asked about it, I'd go, look at that. And then they'd go, oh, right. And I'd go, mm, yeah, can't really criticise me, can you? Pro- no, that is a bit of a get out though, isn't it? It was almost like a cheat. Almost, it's little, like a little cheat code, Liam, some would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you enter, I am transgender. Yeah. And everything goes up a level of different... Anyway, no, uh, I don't know. I'd put, like, oh, I value... My personal values are le- learning more skills, constantly improving, and just being as helpful as I can to management. That's quite good. That's quite good. I'm really, Thank uh, you. And, and I see what you've done there. You've been you've been quite smart. Um, yeah. So... A couple of examples. Did you put films? No, but a couple of examples of what other people put. They one one put like, "Ah, oh, uh, my personal value is is justice. I'm very much into like treating other people fairly." And that's a good one. Yeah, and another one was like working together to create a better product 
for example. Also good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit. That one's a little bit too. That's what you like. You've got to try and. But you've got to try and hide it a little bit. No, but that's okay. The game. To be fair, this is what the the manager's manager guy put. So the, the the most senior role in the room put that. I mean, he can write whatever he wants. Exactly. No one's gonna. Yeah, he comes along. that. And just writes because I was yeah. like, oh, I, it doesn't really matter, does it? No one's gonna see it. So yeah, I of course, wrote, right. This is the the picture that you have to show everyone for two days. Yep. But obviously people can't read this. I deliberately wrote, but um, I, I, yeah, I wrote, all work and no play makes Liam a dull boy. Such a bad decision, Liam. Yeah, oh, terrible. But I was like, I was answer. struggling and they were like, we'll give you a minute. And the minute ran out and I panicked. And I, essentially what I was trying to get at, and I kind of, by the end of the second day, I'd learnt, don't say that because it wasn't going down well. So I was just like, oh, I like to try and bring fun with the work that I do. Which is essentially okay, what yes, I was getting yeah, at. That's a better way of saying it. Yeah, but no, yes. that's not what all work and no play means. I know. That just I means to... you don't like doing work. And yeah. you like having fun. Yeah. Then you had to... Right, hang on. Let me just think about this. What I didn't realise. So yeah. you've done the drawing. Yep, fine. Written down the personal value. At, at this point, yeah. I still did not know and was blissfully unaware that we'd be sharing any of this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Turns and so out... far, you've batted, you've batted zero... Mm-hmm. Just you've this is two strikes. Yep, yep, yep. So first thing you have to do is show the picture. So I've got quite a good picture really that I'm showing here. Because it's what yeah, the other guy drew of me. Job. Um Personal value, obviously I had to go and tell every single person I met that and it did take probably about five different sessions before I was like, Ah, oh, I need to tweak this a little bit. Yeah. So it just yeah, doesn't yeah, sound yeah. good. Next one, energy sources. Where do you get your energy from? What do you enjoy doing? Yeah, so for this you put something like I mean, you could lie completely and just say, I'm an extrovert. I really take uh, my energy from working with other people. And, you know, again, ideas didn't think or... I'd be sharing it, did I? So why no, would I lie? No, you didn't. So did you put blood? No, I wrote... <laughs> and then draw little fangs. I wrote TV, cinema, games. Bad. bad. Gym. <laughs> so bad. Time with friends. Bad. You get energy from the gym. That just, people... So already people are like, he's answered this wrong. And yeah. then you say gym and they're like, and also he doesn't understand how gyms work. And I put time with friends. And then I put comics. And I thought, mm, if anyone does just look over my shoulder, that's a bit lowbrow. So I put slash reading. <laughs> <laughs> Which then I had to read out to everyone. This is honestly, what you've done here is like my nightmare. I would have left. Oh. That's not even a joke. I'd have gone. Yeah, I should have. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have, The first time I sat down and they went, Right now, you've got to show them the picture and yeah. read these out. I'd have stood up. I'd have gone, I need to take a poo. I'd have just <laughs> never come back. So, some, some examples that other people gave. One one person that I respect was like, look, I get my energy source from being alone. Lots of people put family. Lots of people put kids. Yeah. This guy was like, I have family and kids, but where I get my energy source from is just switching off from the world and just being alone. Is not having them around me. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, fair I play. I, I, yeah, introvert. He yeah. went for the introvert. Exactly. Yeah. So many people put family and kids. At one point, I was like, yeah. "Should I have put family?" Like that seems you to should be. Have, you should have put my family and kids. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, next was a little section called Mind Share, and the way this was pitched. Okay. What's worrying you? What's on your mind when you were driving into the office uh, or, or into this like hotel that we were staying at? What What were you thinking about this morning? And yeah. one of the examples they gave was traffic. Like maybe traffic was bad. Oh, okay, well, they gave that example because I was going to play the game there and go for a, a lame one, but if they've said traffic. Yeah, so what would you have said? Traffic. But what else? I mean, if I was playing the game, I'd go for the like, I'd worry that I'm, you know, oh, see, I'd, I'd be tempted to put like, oh, I'm worried that I'm not achieving the goals I'm setting out for myself. Yeah. Got it. I'm, I'm worried that I'm not setting, I'm not achieving the goals I'm setting out for myself because I'm setting my goals too high. Okay. And maybe I need to just take a chill pill on the work. So that's if you're playing the game. What if you were like, I don't have to read this out to anyone. Uh, Donald Trump, North Korea, the Im- impeding threat of nuclear war. So the first thing I wrote down. Yep. Traffic. Yep. Because I was like, Good I don't know what I'm worried about. Generally, like, yeah. one, I didn't really want to put, you know, slowly going blind because I thought, oh. You should have though, because that's like me like, playing the I'm transgender card. You yeah. got down to that point and they'd have gone, oh. Yeah, but I was just like, I don't, I don't really, I don't want that. I don't want to be just looking at that on this sheet if I have to like look at this sheet at all. So I was like, nah. It's like everyone just, just check the sheet again. Everyone have a little look at the sheet. Yeah. You'd be like, and yeah. in hindsight, it's one of the things that I did do well because imagine if I'd had to read that out to every single 
group in, in the room. <laughs> I'm that would have been going a nightmare. Blind. Sorry. Sorry, what? You yeah. said you got your energy from the gym. What's going on with your eyes? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Here's the... Um, I did put gym slash fitness because at the time... we Things just... you're worried about. Yeah, well, we just got back from Dubrovnik. Um, I'm I, Even now, I'm still struggling getting back into the, the gym routine. Uh, I'm going on average once a week, it's not which is not here. good. Uh, also, like, my personal trainer was leaving. So I've got... One? Yeah, oh, that's another thing we need to talk about. So okay, this, right. this catching up was going to be long, I'm sorry. It's already We're already at 20 minutes, yeah. and we've only done one thing, and we've yeah. not even finished it yet. The other thing that was on my mind is... Um, so this was four weeks after my first wax, and I was about to go for my <laughs> second one. Yeah. Now, yeah, Liam. So I just wrote down wax. Right? <laughs> okay. Because here's, here's what was on my mind about it specifically. <laughs> My back has been like sort of scarred from the first one. Right. Okay. I don't know what's gone wrong. Um, and even when I went back the second time, they were like, oh yeah, I'm not sure what's happened there. And they were like, I'm not going to do that area again. Uh, Kat like, yeah. did some research on the internet and has since found out it's quite common. So we're going to try a different waxing place next and see if they can advise anything. Like, I'm putting oil and stuff on it to try and make the scarring go down. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, like, when it first happened like on my stomach as well, it sort of scarred a little bit, but it went down really quickly. Yeah, I remember seeing the patch. Yeah, yeah. Like, my back is still scarred from it. Like that. Yeah, so that was on my mind. Yeah. So I wrote down, then had yeah. to read it out yeah. to all the management. Yeah. But I modified I it. See, I tweaked see, it. So Yeah, that's the thing. There's, I mean, I'm desperately trying to think of how you could tweak that, and the only thing I can think is earwax, and then just say, you've got an ear problem. No. Instead of being like, oh yeah, so my back is all scarred and fucked and everyone just looked at me like I was weird, I told a little white lie. Yeah? I said I was going for my first wax and it was oh on my God, mind and I was no, worried. That's not better. That's not better. That's just, you've not you've not helped at all. So the manager's manager, like the most senior guy in the, in the room, I, yeah. obviously I, I said this out loud yeah. to the table. All Were of the you man- first? Did you not understand by this point what was happening? We, no, because you had to write down all of these things before you read them out. So it wasn't like yeah, you wrote yeah, one yeah. down so and then, then read it out. So then what you do, Liam, is you go like this. The, the moment someone else starts reading theirs out... No, I went first. Like, oh, fuck. You were first. Yeah, because again, I was like, I just want to get that's this out of the way. Asked. See, because that's... Oh, God, you just made so many bad decisions yeah, because this because all oh, of the I'm managers really looked at the Asian guy and then they looked at me and they were oh. like, well, Liam, you go first. And I was like, oh, okay. No. And then oh. I was just like, and as it happened, I was just like, this is gradually getting worse. So yeah. I was like, I'm going for my first wax. Um, yeah. One manager was immediately like, why? And I was like, well, I had to just like start embellishing. So I was like, well, I went on holiday why recently. Why did he ask why? Yeah, I, was like, I, had, I went on holiday recently. I was really self-conscious about the amount of hair there was. So oh I wanted to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the, the manager's manager, the senior guy in the room was like, to be fair, if I was going for my first wax, that would be on my mind and I'd be worried about it too. But the thing is, yeah, there you go. Yeah, but I then had to go around this like for two days. Every single time I was going to a different group. Why didn't you change them? I didn't, because there's a I thing know, that happened. I know why didn't you? There's a thing that happened. Okay, keep going. It became known, shall we say? Yeah, yeah, right. So you couldn't change it because it yeah. spread like gossip. You became yes. that person to yeah. the point where okay. on the last group, someone went, "I've so been looking forward to this because I know that you're the guy that put wax, didn't you?" <laughs> I, I am. I'm in pain from this story because it's so bad and horrible that this happened to you. Yeah, but it's also your own fault. I, this is the problem. I have no one to blame. I just no. It was half eight in the morning. By this it point, was it was probably early. like nine. I wasn't like no thinking. You weren't. I, like oh. if I could do it all again, I'd be like, right. Just in case you have to read it out. Yeah. Don't put wax. Don't put a lot of the stuff you put. Draw a no. better picture. This is the thing, because now, right, imagine how I've now looked to this entire, like, 40-odd people where every single group we would have to have the same conversation of, yep. why are you going for a wax? Blah, blah, blah. There was, like, there was a few women there, and they were like, oh, yeah, well, we, we do it. It's it's nothing to worry about. It's not too painful. Yeah, so because also because you've done the white light, you're getting sympathy for something that's not even true because yep. you already have the wax. Yeah, there was yep. an Italian guy there who was like, "Yeah, I I get totally waxed, full body wax. It's like it, it hurts on your legs, but if you just stick to like from the waist up, it's fine." It's like yep. some people were asking, 
anything more? Are you getting waxed? Is it like, wh- where are you getting waxed? Yep. Right. People were like, oh, is it, are we going... I mean, you're lucky that no one said... Because surely they, they'd be... When you were like, oh, you know, I felt a bit self-conscious because of my body hair. You're lucky no one went, oh, can, you, can I see how yes. old you are if you don't mind? Yes. Because that would have been... You'd have just had to be like, no, you Yes, can't. exactly. Exactly. Because it, it, it has, like, it had grown back in that space. It, it grows back quite quickly for me. And but in not a month, enough to be like... Oh, not enough to be like, is... that's a concern. No. Yeah. Definitely not. Jeez. So that was that was lucky. But equally, you can't ask that in a work No, thing. but you can't. So, and that would, have been, that would have been weird. But it was awful. Absolutely awful. I, honestly, I just had the thought, Liam, that gave me even more pain, which was when you were saying, imagine having to have that conversation again. My, my, my like the thing that made me cringe the most was imagining you reading all this out and as you're reading it, you're like, oh, fuck, I've got to read all this out. Yeah. Clearly, I've not done it right. Whatever. Yeah. But I can only imagine it felt worse when the second person went and theirs were just good. Yeah. Because that's... At least you could be like, well, maybe everyone's misunderstood. Maybe they're... You know, everyone's going to have a little thing they put on there they haven't thought it through. Yeah. Everyone's put something stupid. And the moment someone reads out a perfect one to you and you're just like, yeah, that is what I was meant to write. Yeah. Like, honestly, yeah. some examples of what other people would have would have put... Uh, one person uh, put their son turned 19 and hasn't moved out the house yet and they don't know how to encourage them like in a in a supportive yeah. way to that's a good that's a good one yeah that's something that you should worry about yeah uh, one of the people was like oh well i'm one of the managers that has to do these workshops all over the world for the next like month so i'm worried about bit spending so much time away from my family oh god wow that's good yeah and then now i'm there like oh, i'll go for my wax. first wax next, uh, <laughs> on the weekend and and oh. i had to like just there's people like well, what are you worried about and i was like well, I've got to lie more. So, well, I don't know what pain to expect. <laughs> I don't know if it'll permanently scar my back. Yeah, uh, it was awful. So then we had to also do like strengths and communication style, which I won't go into. I didn't do those quite as bad. Like for no, strengths, you sort of, yeah. For strengths, Did I was like, to... I, I kind of started figuring it out and started waking up and was like, oh well, I'm a project manager, so I should probably put organisation. Yeah. I mean, it clearly isn't, but <laughs> no, <laughs> understanding tasks and goals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, communication style, I just put um, friendly. Friendly. I put friendly. <laughs> I put Order. quiet and calm. And then I also put it's situation and person dependent. Because if I get on really well with someone, I'm not so quiet. Got you, yeah, yeah, yeah. But honestly, it was an excruciating two days. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, like I said, I genuinely would have left. I, th- I think, honestly, the moment they had said... You now need to read these out. That I, I would have just left. I've I've nearly done it before from work things where like I'm so terrified of doing pro- like I you know I can't do presentations and shit. Yeah, we did a, a developer workshop once where we had to have coded this example thing. Yeah, and it was geared towards something that I don't understand. There was literally this whole thing it doesn't affect anything we would do as devs in our team. Yeah, it was totally geared towards the other team of devs, and at the end I had nothing, and okay. I said to Dan, I went. I'm just going to leave. And yeah. He was like, what do you mean? And I was like, Dan, I've got nothing. I've literally got nothing to show. Yeah. I'm just going to walk out and not come back. And then he was like, no, 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 stay. So I literally had to stand up and go, this is the idea I had. I couldn't build it in time. I don't understand the product and I don't have to use it. Yeah. And then sat back down and was like, what a waste of my time. And I hate this so much. That doesn't sound so, good. So I've been there, Liam. Yeah. Not as bad as yours. Yours is no. definitely worse. I mean, I'm never getting a promotion in this job. No, you're, you're now the wax guy. Yeah. I, so people are going to ask you how it went. Yeah, I know. The Christmas party, where I'm going to see most of these people again, yeah. is just constantly going to be like answering questions about waxing. So yeah, it might work to your benefit, because it's the wrong answers for management, but it might be a funny enough story that you just become sort of popular. Yeah, like, not, like, popular, not popular, but, you know but like I mean? known. Like, if, you, if you play up to it, at, at the, not play up to it, but at the Christmas party, if you're just like, yep, yeah, I did that, <laughs> what a silly mistake, yeah. I reckon everyone will be like, Wax guy is hilarious. Exactly. And it's not even like you'll be popular. It's just when you've got that many people, it's easy to just become like another face in the crowd. Yeah, you'll stand out. Most people now know who, who I we, am. Who can we promote? Who can we possibly promote to this role? We Wax need guy. a smooth person. <laughs> we need someone who can slip into all those tight places Yeah, and with his hairless body. To be fair, at the end of the, the two days... Management yeah. had to go around and do a little talk about what they've learned from the whole experience. And one of yeah. the lady managers was like, I've had a really good time talking to people about things I wouldn't normally get to talk to them about in a work environment, such as waxing. <laughs> and did everyone laugh? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually realised what I think one of my strengths is 
from this whole... You're the laughing stock. Awkward, yeah. From this whole awkward situation, I think one of my strengths is I'm quite good in uncomfortable situations yeah. at sort of helping other people feel more comfortable but yeah. by throwing myself under the bus, essentially. Yeah, yeah, you're the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. So I don't know if that is a strength, but well, I'm trying... Well, when you go to your next one, I'm in tr- a couple of years... I'm just trying so desperately to put a positive spin on this. Yeah, because it's maybe one of the worst things I've ever heard. Like, it's horrible. I, yeah. I genuinely, there's, you know, usually I will quite happily jump on board taking the mick out of you, Liam, but I genuinely feel bad for you. This yeah. is, I feel so bad for you. Yeah, thank you. I... Not like not like now, but like picturing the Liam in that moment. Yeah. I just feel awful. That's yeah. horrible. It was, it was, honestly. Yeah. Like that first morning when... Within like the first morning, you had to go and, and present to three different groups already. Yeah. I was just like, "This is not going how I thought it would." It's all gone wrong. I was like, "Look at my look at my post-it note. <laughs> what what's gone on? This is what I was expecting." <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, I'd forgotten the post-it note. You should have gone up at the end and just written on it. I was so wrong. <laughs> yeah, and then okay, I'm going to be a bit naughty here. Okay, okay. There's a thing that happens in this communication and culture workshop that we were told it's like Fight Club. Don't tell anyone about it because they didn't want anyone in, in our like organisation to know because if you know, you can ruin it. Okay. However, Do you think people from your organisation listen to this podcast? No, but this... like So we had an external company come and run this course. Oh, so if anyone goes, hey, listeners, if you're going on a cultural... And communication and co- workshop. Communication and cultural workshop. That I, I if could the give first you... thing they get you to do is write on a post-it note, Liam's about to help you break the game. I can I can honestly give you a clue that's going to actually ruin it for pretty much it's everyone already... there. And now I've Go had such it. a horrible experience, that's why I'm... Yeah, well, you're saving it. other people. So, at the end of the first day, there's a task. Okay. You're splitting... So, you're in your little group, and there's probably like seven or eight groups in this room. Yeah. Uh, each group has to nominate a person. Coincidentally, every single group that had a project manager on them had the project manager nominated because they were meant to like lead the group. Okay, was, this, was this coincidence? Yeah, just every, every single group had to decide who in that group and every single one picked the project manager to go and do it. Right. Because their, their yeah. logic was just, well, this is kind of your job. So go, yeah, you're a fucking PM. Go That's represent our group. So yeah. you get taken away to a different room. You get sat down with one of the people on the, on the, that runs the workshop and they're like, right, I'm the CEO of a big company. Um, it's a plain company. We want you to go and design a new prototype for, for planes uh, yeah. once you go back to your group you've got 90 minutes uh, you can use whatever's in the room nothing else a project manager isn't allowed to touch anything and at the yeah. end we're going to have a competition and see which one can go the furthest unaided okay so in that situation again how would you have responded get a bit of paper tell my group get a bit of paper and make a paper airplane yeah that's smart that's what I, that's, it's essentially what I did I went back I gave them the yeah. brief I went anyone got any ideas they started faffing around with cardboard and stuff. I went, look, let's make this easy. There was, like, big um, A3, like, post-it boards and stuff. So I was yep. like, just rip off one of the A3 bits of paper, make a fucking massive plane. And then what they ended up doing, which worked quite well, was using cardboard to sort of, like, strengthen it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did a, a test. It went really well. We had to go and fly them outside. We didn't factor that in. It was windy and rainy and horrible. Yeah, right, paper plane, not yeah. great in the wind or rain. No, but inside it worked like an absolute dream. I was actually quite proud of my group. Um, Did you say that to them? Yeah, another thing you were being marked on was uh, how it looked. So I put one yep. of the guys who had nothing to do, put him on branding, he designed a little logo, cut it out, we stuck it to the side of the plane. We won best looking plane. Ooh, quite proud of that. you just the fanciest, Liam? Yeah. Liam is doing a very, did a very fancy pose when he said that, listeners. Brilliant. Um, here's how you ruin it. Yeah. They've hidden a glider somewhere in no, the room. No. Okay. The way it's worded, like using things like competition and all this sort of stuff, means everyone yeah. is is trying to one up the other groups, right? Yeah. But think of it in a in a work setting. The CEO has said to five people below them, "I want you to develop oh, a prototype." Oh, you're meant to all work together. Yeah. But yeah, got you. you're putting like a highly pressurized situation with a time limit. Everyone immediately kicks into competing. They've said they they've run this like like hundreds of times. No one has ever figured it out that you're actually all meant to work together. Yeah. So I it, mean, I mean, also 
if they're phrasing it like a competition, then fuck yeah. working together. Yeah, it's exactly. like listeners. If you're listening to this, it sounds like it's way more fun to just build a plane. That's like, do well, that. Well, that's what happened at the and end. And then at the right? end, go. I knew that all along. No, or wait for all the other PMs to leave the room and just go up to the people and go. We're all meant to work together, and I fucking refuse. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Here's the thing, at the end, right? They put all of the all of the like leads in front of the room. They went. So why didn't you work together? And I went. I thought it'd be more fun. Yeah, correct answer. Yeah, but um, I mean, wrong answer, but correct answer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the guys on my team proper kicked off about it and was like, honestly, yelling at the people that were running this course, being like, what? if I was in his position, I'd have done the exact same thing. This is stupid. You've written in the rules. It's a competition. <laughs> he was yeah. getting irate. It was hilarious. Um, but it was just, it was just bullshit like that for two days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All that stuff is. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think I learned anything apart from uh, one of the guys that helps run it was a psychologist and they talk about the brain and how it reacts when it's like making decisions and being put under pressure and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the part of your brain that's good at sort of being smart shrinks when you're um, okay when you're under pressure and right, all this I, bullshit. I don't think that's right, but okay. I don't know, it's what some psychologist guy was saying. Yeah. Um, Just awful. Okay, right. That was what you learned. Just some some weird shit. I just learned. Like it's one. If it's ever, if work people were ever in the same room as you, never write down a bit of paper wax. I mean, don't write down a lot of the stuff you wrote down there. But wax is yeah. it's very. If yeah, you're given five minutes that. as a drawing task, spend those Do five it. minutes. Yeah. So that this this all happened a month ago, and I've just been waiting for so long to tell you. Yeah, about holy it. shit. Well, I'm glad you told us because that's awful. Right? A good story. In Abs- a horrible way. Absolutely awful. I've got yeah. one other thing we're catching up with, which I'll try and make quick. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my personal trainer has left now, the one that I got on sort of well with, but like we just struggled with the small talk. Yeah. But yeah. I liked her. She was cool. She indulged me with my Zac Efron stuff and she'd sort of, you know, play along. Um, so I went and had a session with an, uh, this other guy. The session went well. I enjoyed it. But he talks like quite fast and when you're working out it's hard to listen as you're working out and yeah. he also does this thing where because he talks quite fast he'll ask you a question but then get to give an example he'll be like oh so you like going to the cinema what was the last film you saw right so we're now going to do this exercise and here's what you need to do and I'm like right do, do you want an answer to the question you just asked me or am I meant to be paying attention so yeah. I enjoyed the session, but wasn't sure. So there's a, a new girl that started. I was like, well, I'll give her a go. She looked a bit dorky. I was like, maybe we could gel. Because she looked dorky. You're such a judgmental dickhead. I know. Uh, so session, she was like, what are your goals? I was like, to look like Zac Efron, but not like Baywatch Zac Efron, but like Bad Neighbour Zac Efron. And she just looked at me like I'd just basically spoken in an alien language. And I was like, this ain't going to go well. Um, yeah. I was sick at the end of the session. I made it to the to the bathroom in time. Weren't like, you sick the first time you did it with the other girl as well? Nearly. Nearly. Oh, okay, I sorry. didn't actually throw up. I had to go, but it was just dry heaving. This one was actual, like, expelling of, I don't know, whatever was in me. Maybe you should just stop this fitness thing, Liam. It doesn't sound like it's working for you. Yeah, I went with the guy that speaks fast because he didn't make me throw yeah. up. <laughs> that's a good that's... decision, not the one that made you vomit everywhere. Yeah. I haven't seen her since, yeah. but like I said, I've only been going once a week. Um... So that's my that's that's been my life. What have you been up to? I went to Portugal for a holiday, Liam. That sounds so much better. No, <laughs> it was. It was better. I didn't feel embarrassed. It was all Were you very sick relaxing. at any point? No, no. Damn. I think and the worst it... I got was a little bit of sunburn. Was it in the shape of a dick like mine? <laughs> nope, nope, just normal sunburn. <laughs> well, look at Ellie just living her best life. <laughs> look at Ellie's just sort of not managing to fuck it up as bad as Liam does <laughs> repeatedly I don't understand your life I don't know how all this shit happens to you I don't if, the, the only good thing is we have it all on record with this podcast yeah yeah because I've, I've obviously yeah I've been going back and listening to the older ones while I've been putting them onto YouTube and it's quite fun to be like oh that's where we started this whole wiping thing and yeah. just like it's it's quite fun seeing it all just snowball happen again, yeah. yeah to at this point I'm at now, I, I just don't know what's going on with my life anymore. No, it, it is weird. <laughs> it does feel like your life has gotten more and more awkward and weird as you've gone on. Yeah, I I kind of thought because we started this when I was what like twenty seven, twenty eight. You're so so young. I just thought by now I'd have grown out of it. No, you're just old and also awkward. It's getting worse. <laughs> 
it is. Uh, it's it's not deliberate. <laughs> At no point am I like, this is going to make great content for the podcast. That normally no. happens like two days after once the shame has subsided. <laughs> yeah, once you've sort of recovered. You're, once you've stopped lying on the shower floor crying. Yeah. You go, oh, it's a good story. Yeah. Oh. So tell me more about Portugal. I don't know. It was, uh, you know, we just went out for... It was an all-inclusive holiday. So sort of chilled out. Didn't have to worry about going and booking places. Just I mean, the first was the day food we, got, we good, traveled. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. It yeah. wasn't like amazing, but yeah. it was good. Okay, and there was a lot of it. There were three restaurants that were all literally next to each other, like these little buildings. Yeah, and then when you were at a meal, you could just go into the other ones, get food off there, buffet, come back to oh, your okay, one. That's cool. Yeah, so you yeah. had like tons of choice every meal. There was yeah loads to choose from, which is what you want. Were there other restaurants nearby that you could go to if you wanted to? Uh, probably, but we didn't really look. Oh, okay. Because I mean, because there was so much choice, we just sort of had all our meals there at the hotel. Yeah. But yeah, it was. So I mean, so, the first day we got there, we had there was like literally the way it worked was they gave you a little sheet that was like here's all the times for the restaurants. Yeah. So it was like not all three would be open. They were all open for dinner. Yeah. But then throughout the day, some would close and yeah, whatever, yeah. they're getting ready. But you could eat for uh, from about five or six a.m. till yeah uh, half an hour before midnight. Just by moving and to different restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would there would always be one open doing something. That makes sense though when you think like busy hotel. Yeah, and the first day we got there, we ate all six of their like meals on their menu that were like yeah. you know breakfast, morning brunch, yeah. lunch, snack, dinner, midnight snack. The midnight snack, interestingly, was served from 10.30 till 11.30. Oh, okay. They don't really understand midnight how midnight snack. works, do they? No, they don't. It was, no. uh, it, was a, it was a bit of an interesting one, that. Yeah. But yeah, then we didn't... We were going to go kayaking we in should, the sea. Anyone who listened to... Was it the last episode where we discussed that? Possibly? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll know how well that went when I tried that with Kat. Yeah, cause, so I was like, me, Tom and Frankie were like, oh. They, they were like, oh, we want to do sea kayaking. And, and you, like, were like, you. you were like, you were like, oh, like, this, this I want to so do it good better. <laughs> for the podcast. I'll do sea kayaking, then I can come back and be like, Liam, what were you talking about? Yeah, how easy is that? No, but uh, the but thing is, you'd there... have to do sea kayaking with cat. That's the <laughs> that's the thing where you'd be like, oh right. yeah, Liam has a point. Well, I think with Tom and Frankie, I'd probably be the cat in that situation where I'm yes. just like, I, I can't be asked doing this. <laughs> yes, you would. I'd have just paddled around in the shallow bit of the sea and then got out and gone and had an ice cream or something. Yeah, but. uh they uh, told us the sea was too rough. Oh. It was it was a little bit rough, but sure. So probably like what we had, because we had like waves and stuff. Like it was a bit choppy, but it wasn't like... Uh, uh, the waves were quite big. I will admit the waves were fairly big, but... How big I'm are we sure talking? I'm sure I could have through it. How big are we talking? Pretty big. Oh, was it actually choppy then? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It probably wasn't safe to go out in a kayak. Okay, yeah, that's not good. No, but you know... Well, well, almost. You almost had a good story for the podcast. <laughs> I almost had a good story. Yeah. Did anything did anything interesting happen in Portugal? I mean, I literally spent 40 minutes talking about a two-day experience. And, and I was away for seven days. And you've spent all of about five minutes discussing that. And I'm nearly done. Uh, <laughs> I got to play a fun game. Okay. Which I, I've, I, I've invented. It works if you... It works if you're transgender. It works quite well. It mm. works if you're... Maybe say interesting looking and people like to look at you right in sort of confusion and the yeah. game is called uh find the people that are doing that and stare at them until they're awkward because people tried to there was a couple of people that uh you know went down for a meal in a dress and someone yeah. was sitting there just staring at me i saw a couple of people at one point sort of chuckling to each other and pointing over at me so i just yeah. went cool we're gonna play a fun game when you walk past me and i literally just sat there looking at someone on my table as they're walking past, I timed it perfectly. But I just went boom as she turned to look at me, and she just went. Huh. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, that's fucking right." You might want to use your words to describe what happened there for anyone listening, because you did a oh, very I good did, like yeah, visual. Point. visual. I did for... <laughs> Listeners, if you had a video, <laughs> you'd have got oh. that. I looked. I looked away. I waited till she had walked around and turned her head to face me, and I did a quick sharp turn of the head, locked eyes with her, and then she looked very awkward and sort of jumped and ran away huh. that's one way fun of dealing game. with it i guess yeah yeah did you get that it's a lot a, it's out a there fun though one. well it, the hotel was mainly like 
people on a holiday so like half british yeah that's what i was going to ask like was it a or, or was it a noticeable there were a lot of english people there there were some german people a couple of spanish people and then but the, the people that like were paying the most attention was it obvious where they were from or no not it, was really? pro- it was a mix yeah it was a mix. okay some british people some portuguese people yeah i couldn't tell who the german people were so probably some of them yeah I mean, all in all, not many people did it. It was just a few. Yeah. And even then, you know, I don't mind if people sort of have a second glance where they're like, oh, it's when people are staring and laughing that I'm like, oh, I'm going to make you feel awkward. You yeah. Dick. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a fun holiday. Yeah, <laughs> it was less awkward than yours, which is an achievement. Yeah, I guess so. You know, it means I, d- I did good. Any other highlights from it? Uh, No. Anyone that follows me on... Oh, no, I don't think anyone follows me on Instagram, really, but... I don't. I posted a shit ton of stuff on there. Mainly me lying next to a pool. Oh, okay. Maybe I should get Instagram and follow you so I can be like, oh, look, I'm I'm there too. Yeah. it would. It, you would have felt like it, Lib. Yeah. There was a lot of pool time. But oh, I did not... one day... One day they did have... Uh, one of the restaurants had... Like, I was trying to do a thing where I eat fish every day, have a different fish every day, because I like seafood. Yeah. I like trying new and interesting fish that I might not have eaten before. Yeah. Uh, so one day, we went to the little grill place, and they had a little like uh, metal container thing that they were keeping all the grilled shit in, yeah. and it said cuttlefish on it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's you know, kind of like a squiddy little animal. Yeah. Do you know what a cuttlefish is, Liam? Yeah, yeah, with the yeah. hard shell. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'll have some of that. I'm sure it'll all be you know, nicely prepared. Just a whole cuttlefish. They just get a whole cuttlefish and they just f- cook that bad boy right up. So I, you I took it? it back. To, I took it back to my table, Liam. I went yeah. to everyone. This is disgusting. I don't know what to do with it. So yeah. I googled how do you eat it, and uh, everywhere I could see said that when you're preparing the cuttlefish, you do a lot of stuff, so it's not just a cuttlefish. Right. So I so I just went. I don't really want to do a shit ton of work to eat this. Yeah. So I'll just get them to take it away. It's like lobster. I want to try lobster, but I don't know where you, how like how you eat it. So I'm always put off of order in it. I think lobster's quite easy because you just well you have to break smash into it the and shell, stuff, don't you? It seems like you a lot do, of admin. Yeah. I think, but I think it's just like inside the shell is meat. The the cuttlefish yeah. was like they were talking about removing a lot of shit. Yeah. That you shouldn't eat, and I was like, I don't want to do that. No, that's fair. Did you do any like trips? Like, did you get to see Portugal, or did you literally just spend the whole time in a hotel? We went to a zoo that I'd been to before when we last went to Portugal. Okay. So we went back there, saw some penguins and lots of other animals. It's quite a good yeah. zoo. Can't remember what it's called. Uh. The guys went to a water park one day, yeah. but okay. I was just like, I can't be asked to do that, so I'm going to stay at the hotel and uh, read and chill out. Yeah. And then, I don't know, did a couple of walks down to the beach, sort of had a little wander around Portugal, did one day where we just went and explored. Yeah. You know, it was all just very relaxing holiday. That's the problem with an all-inclusive, like, relaxed holiday. Yeah. You don't come back with a load of stories like, Portugal's amazing, here's all this cool stuff we did, because mostly... we went out there to relax, and we're like... Yeah. We'd get up, go to the pool, get breakfast, come back to the pool, but and then just sort of... To be fair, like when we went to Dubrovnik, it was to relax, but we still did something most... We had one like hotel day where we were just, let's just swim in the pool and chill yeah, out. Yeah, no, no, see, there's a difference, Liam. There's a holiday to relax, which is all holidays. You don't go on stress holidays. Well, no, skiing weird? is not really a relaxing holiday. Well, I've never been skiing, so I can't, can't account for that. But, it's like a workout so like, every day. This was a holiday specifically just to relax. Yeah. So you like having a day stuff. on day off isn't. Yeah, you could. But like, yeah. but okay, but like, so for example, we would like we wouldn't set an alarm necessarily. We go okay, so today we're going to go and explore. I don't know the city or whatever. Get up whenever. Get the bus in. Spend a couple of hours there. Have some food, whatever. Come back. Go out for a nice restaurant meal. Come back to the hotel bar. Have a few drinks, and that's your day done. It's still yeah, like but, chilled and relaxing. But we but were also all stuff. inclusive. So when you're in all inclusive, yeah, you true. don't want to be going out and buying lunch Spend whatever, because then you're sort of like, what's the fucking point? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're all inclusive, kind of, yeah. yeah, I get that. I think that's the, the main thing is a lot of the time you're like, we'd go and do stuff, but they'd be like, mm, I kind of want to be back in time for dinner. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. We, we drunk a lot. There was a, I guess there was, the, <laughs> there was a weird guy who I say is weird. I really liked him. He was a bartender they had there. Yeah. And every day at the hotel, like, to be fair to them, they're all-inclusive, because usually, you know, 
it can be a bit selective with what you can have alcohol wise. Yeah, like they'll yeah. be like, oh yeah, the cheap beer is free, but you can't have this shit. Yeah. To be fair to them, a lot of their shit was still just free. Oh, that's good. So every day they did a cocktail of the day. Yeah. And I found out about halfway through the week that th- this bartender, this specific bartender, was the guy that was inventing them. Okay. Which is, I was like, dude, you're like my hero. Give yeah. me more alcohol. But what he would do is you would turn up at his little hut thing yeah. where he was doing the drinks and you'd go, I'll give you an example. Me and Frankie, we walk up together and I said like, oh, I'll have this thing called a Dracula's Blood, which was vodka and red slush. Yeah. Just a simple drink. And he yeah. went, yep, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It makes that. And then Frankie went, oh, okay, yeah, I'll have uh, Malibu Sunset, which was a drink she was having that she enjoyed. Okay. And uh, the guy the guy went, no. And she went, right, uh, wh- I, wh- what? And he went, no, 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 you're not having that. I'll make you, I'll make you, what do you like? I'll make you this. And Frankie went, he went, I'll make you this thing. And it's got whatever and whatever and coffee liqueur. And Frankie went, oh, I, I don't like coffee. Yeah. And he went, well, I'll make it. Then you try it and we'll see. Yeah. So he hadn't made my drink yet. He made Frankie this drink that she didn't like, obviously. Obviously. So I went, it's fine. I'll try it. I had some. I was like, yeah, I'll have that. That's cool. I don't yeah. mind. I'll drink that. Yeah. Then he made Frankie another cocktail that she didn't like. Yeah. And she was just going, please, please just... Were, at this point, there's a queue behind us of other people wanting drinks. Yeah. One of them is just laughing, being like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. And then, like, as we were leaving with three different drinks that no one wanted, he was just... The guy behind us was like, that's amazing. How? What is this guy doing? And that, he did it yeah. for the rest of the holiday. So you just go there he, and he's like, I'm going to make you whatever I want to make you, basically. Yes. And it was the best thing ever. I loved it. It was so annoying, but also the best. Because yeah. you'd be like, you'd come back and be like, I It's like drink, drink roulette. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It literally is. He just makes you whatever the fuck he wants and you drink it. Fair enough. That's, okay. Did, um, did yeah. everyone that you went with have a good time? Yeah, yeah. Everyone seemed to enjoy it. That's it's good. all good. I noticed me and Kat yeah. didn't get an invite, but you know, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, move closer like you might be. And, well, yeah. Uh, if we'll go to the then plan. we'll see. Yeah, we will. You need to make friends with all of my friendship group first that go on. Oh, holiday. that's not going to work, is it? They'll go. Well, obviously, you they'll need go. What's to. on your mind? And they'll go waxing randomly on a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't times. meet new people anymore. It breaks me. <laughs> we just won't do fucking icebreaker games. How am I going to get to know them? You see this uh, uh, impasse I'm at? Yeah, let me draw you for... Uh, I've got five minutes to draw a portrait of you. Done. <laughs> done. Do I get points for getting it done quick? I was the first one to finish. I'm worried about waxing. <laughs> uh, all work and no play. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so that was catching up with. Yeah. Time for everyone's favourite part of the show where we review shit. And I think you've got a very important one to knock out the park. I have. Liam, as listeners of the show who've been listening for a long time will know... About a year uh, now? Yeah, I think it is possibly a year or more. Uh, We'd got in the habit of Liam recommending me books to intersperse with my normal reading. So that that the reviews would get mixed up a little bit because I tend to review things quite highly. So They'd always be fantasy. Yeah, fantasy or sci-fi, and it would always yeah. be you would just kind of would obviously love it because that's that's yep. that's your bag. Uh, it would always be like four, four and a half out of five, uh, and I wanted to add some variety to that mix. I recommended you Fluke, Fluke, which you didn't really like. No, nope, but again, bad. it it was different, right? It wasn't really. It wasn't fantasy. It was a man turning into a dog. <laughs> you can't say it like that. Well, that's what it fucking is. Because that sounds almost recommended... werewolfish. It was more of a like. Um, yeah, no, you're right. Word? He just became a dog. It was there wasn't another part to it. He just became a dog for the rest of his life. Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, then you recommended me Scott Sigler's Nocturnal. Uh, yeah, that's the one, which you really liked. But that's sci-fi-ish. Ish, that but it, was, it had more of a horror element to it. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. little bit. But yeah, that was good. Then you recommended me uh, American Psycho. Yeah, but to be fair, I think I did say when I recommended it, I haven't read it since I was a teenager. It's yeah. just, the, the the thing that made me think of it is it was on the cover of like 1001 books you must read before you die. And I was like, well, yeah. Eddie likes reading. So this clearly is a book that is has, you know, I, I, I wanted an easy win. And I was like, well, if it's on the cover of 1001 books to read before you die, this is going to go. Surely it can't, it can't be a bad book. Uh, yeah. 
as listeners will know, it's taken me a year to read it. I yeah. stopped at 50% for yeah. months. Months. Then yeah. I stopped at 75% until this holiday where I sat down one day and I went, I'm going to finish this fucking book. Yeah. And I spent an entire day. Yeah. Maybe not an entire day. Maybe like half a day. Maybe not even that. Reading the rest of the book. And I can happily report that, yes, the last 20%, 15% is very violent. Not particularly yeah. violent. If that's the selling point of the book that anyone tries to give you, ignore them. There's much more violent stuff that you can read that's more interesting. This is a bad book. Okay. The, the I can't remember what the quote I sent Liam was, but I read oh, the... Uh, quote, yeah. Yeah. There's like an I, author I summary at the end it. where he talks about... Uh, like he just talked about the book and he was like, you know, it, I was sort of writing about myself really with how I felt disillusioned with yeah, what I, I was I've meant got to it. be. Just, do you want me to read it? Uh, save it for one second because I that he finishes off his little about this book yeah. with a quote that sums up the entirety of the book for me, which mm-hmm. I sent to Liam, and it goes like this. Oh yeah, now I'm reading it. Sorry. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Well, that was smooth. But when the book came out a few months later, the controversy stopped. The complaints, the protests, the screaming about what a monster Brett Easton Ellis supposedly was, it all stopped. People finally read the book, and they found out that it wasn't 400 pages of torture and mutilation and advocating the death of women, it's just some boring novel. Yeah, he's right. It is just some boring novel. It's it's a, no- it's a nothing book. People that are saying it's important are wrong. It's yeah, I not. don't know. Like he He himself is just like, this is just a book... Because I've, I've heard that being a thing where people are like, oh, what does it all mean or whatever? What's this discussion about? Is it about how bad Wall Street is and all this stuff? And it yeah. isn't. He says in the author summary thing, it's just about a man trying to live up to what a man is meant to be. Yeah. And having this alternate life where he isn't that man and trying to get that to mesh. Yeah. Like, that's all it is. And as soon as you read that, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. So I wonder why it's put on, on lists like Thousand One Books to Read Before You Die then. I think because of that big controversy... That got a load of people to read it at the time. And then there's a bunch of like... Because apparently there's a bunch of really early reviews before people had read it where they yeah. were saying like, oh, the, he, he, something got leaked. One of the later passages, like yeah. where it is all violent, got leaked. And people were just like, oh, what a load of trash this book is. Yeah. And then it came out and they, and then people were like, oh, no, it isn't. See, you were all wrong. So I think it's just a controversy thing where there was this big controversy then a bunch of people defended it because it wasn't that. Yeah. And that's just built up this like ideal of the book. Because then people who are like anti the con- the people who are like controversy they're just going to read it because it yeah. isn't controversial if you know what i mean yeah so i think i, mean, I think i, it, like, I read it as a teenager because i was like oh well the film's come out and at that time i like to read the book before i watch the film yeah and i remember like reading the book ruined the film for me because i was like oh yeah it's just what i've read yeah yeah i i want to watch the film to see how it compares yeah because i will sense. i will admit I'm being really negative because I do genuinely think it's an awful book and I don't think anyone should yeah. read it unless they really want to. But some of the stuff towards the end is more interesting. There is an entire chapter that's written about in third person which breaks from the entire book and that is an interesting choice and the reason it does that is interesting. And there's just a bunch of stuff that like towards the end is kind of interesting in the fact that it's dealing with this like slow this guy becoming slowly more and more insane. Yeah. And I think it does... There was a thing I'd heard about years ago where it was like, there's this whole idea that maybe it's all happening in his head, which yeah. when you're reading the book, you can see and you're like, there are whole there are whole scenes that almost don't make sense because like no one is mm. reacting to certain stuff. Yeah. And the way he's describing things, you're like, it sounds like he's this crazy guy sitting there being crazy and everyone is ignoring it. Yeah. So there is a part of you that's like, oh, it kind of makes sense if he's just delusional. Okay. But honestly... I give it like a two out of five. It's higher than I thought you'd go, to be honest. It literally just gets a tiny bit of redemption for the interesting stuff he did at the end, and that's not even that interesting. So two out of five. Don't read this book. So here's what I'm gonna recommend. I've uh, no, you're not allowed to recommend me books. No, here's my here's my recommendation. I'm not gonna recommend books for a little bit until yeah. maybe like the new year. So I'm gonna ha- let you just go off and read whatever you want to read. You can go crazy, enjoy it. And then when the new year comes around, I've learnt something very important because... Is it not to recommend me shit? Well, I'm currently rereading a book that as a teenager I thought was good. Like, when I think back and remember it, I'm like, there's one passage in particular I remember that, that, that creeped me out. And now I'm reading the rest of the book and it's it's taken me already two months so far 
and I'm only about 70 pages into it. Are you realising that young Liam didn't know what the fuck he was talking about? Yeah. We learnt that when we watched Feast. Yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah, so I want to recommend again, but I'm not going to recommend stuff that, that you think young is Liam yeah. thought was good. I'm yeah, going to start yeah, yeah. trying to actually like find stuff that now Liam thinks is good. That's fine. I'm, I'm up for that. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I want to give you... I do trust your judgment. It's yeah, just I want to give you a little sort of reprieve so because i know you love reading and, and there is a bunch of stuff haven't that, been I, able that came to out a year. <laughs> there was a bunch of stuff that came out while i was reading american psycho literally yeah. the day after i finished american psycho liam yeah. i immediately read the third book of the bobaverse which is something i've reviewed on here before yeah uh which i've been waiting to read for most of that year yeah it's amazing anyone that's listened to my other reviews of the bobaverse knows how i feel about it and the third book is just as good as the other two books go read that it's a four out of five uh but yeah does that not get its own review? It's it's a, a tr- it's a sequel to a trilogy, so there's not a whole lot I can talk about in terms of the book itself. Okay, so maybe not. Right. I, like again, I reviewed it on here before, and it st- it stays the same for the third. Is book. this the uh, we are legion? Is that we are better? legion. Yeah, uh, we are legion for we are many, yep. and then like the, I, I, I think I've recently uploaded them to um, yeah. YouTube, We Are Legion, We Are Bob, and For We Are Many. That's it, yeah. yeah. Went up uh, last week on YouTube. Cool. Yeah, so that that's, that was amazing. And then I've got another book that's... I don't know if I've reviewed the others on here, but I'm going to start reading that. Which is? Whew. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. I literally saw it come out in that year and was like, yeah. I can't even look at this because I want to read it so badly. Yeah, well, this is why I think... I'll give you till the new year so you can just catch up on all Thanks. these things that you've missed out on. And yeah. then, because I'm trying to get back into reading as well. And the book that I'm currently reading was something that I was going to suggest we do together. But because I've struggled so much with it, I'm not going to recommend that. Is it what? It's not Book of Leaves or whatever. Yeah, it? House of Leaves. Oh, really? Because I was interested in reading that. Not I'm as good really, as you remember. I'm really struggling. The thing okay. is, right, I, I would genuinely love you to read it just to see if I'm right for struggling with it. Yeah. But I equally don't want you to be like, it's another book that Leon's recommended that you, you genuinely might think it's amazing. I, it's, yeah. it's it's one of those things that I just... I think with you, nine times out of ten I can be like, I think Ellie will like this. And then there'll be the one time out of ten I'm like, it's a coin flip. Should I either love it or hate it? But there won't be a yeah, middle yeah. ground. And this is a I mean, love to be, or hate to be fair, that's, that's how I am with like most stuff that I watch or read. It's yeah. like, I either love it or there's a very small percent chance that it will just for some reason, will not click with me, and I will yeah. just hate it. Because we were going to do House of Leaves for a culture swap, and I was going to tell you yeah. when I got about halfway through, and you were going to sort of catch up in time. And I'm just yeah. thinking, it's taken me two months to do about 70 pages. <laughs> yeah. So Fair. I just, I don't know. As much as I really would love you to read it, I'm not going to recommend it. That's fair. So maybe I'll just review it normal once I've finished it? Yeah, yeah. I think... I think it's only fair that because you've given me American Psycho, I should be allowed to uh, recommend a book to you that you should it's try and read. It's going to be this massive long one that you always recommend, The Stand or something. Stephen King's The Stand, yes. Yeah. Nah. I think you should read it. I read American Psycho. So the next book I'm going to read after House of Leaves, whenever I finish it, which will be months yeah. from now probably, is the third High School Musical book. Oh yeah, you've, I've still got like... Did I bring the other ones to you? No, not yet. I've only got the first four still. I'll have to find them at some point and bring them to you. There's no huge. Oh, rush. I can see him. Yeah, gone. Let's wait until we've moved. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've also got Stephen King's Pet Cemetery that I bought after I read Carrie a while back, which I do yeah. want to read. But it's a big book. Um, yeah. I mean, I I read these those um Bizarro ones just because I was did, away yeah. and I couldn't take House of Leaves with me because it's a chunky old book. Yeah. And I actually, I think part of why I was more receptive to him was because it was just a nice little break, break. from. It's so pretentious. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. Uh, what right, else have yeah, you let's... done? Uh, that's everything I've done for the review section. So, okay. what have you done, Liam? I obviously went to cinema, didn't I? Of course. You never, never miss a cinema, Liam. I try not to. Uh, I think I... there have been. I think there might have been an episode where you missed the cinema, but still. I think maybe one. Uh, and it would have been one where we literally recorded like two days after. With... We'd... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um... So there's a load of stuff that I'm not going to review because I'm only allowed to do three things, which is bullshit. Yep. But once we're caught up with YouTube, we'll start doing the exclusive ones again. Yep. But we're 
that's, that's, it's that's an sort of... incentive for you to be better at doing the YouTube exactly um, so the first film I'm going to talk about is Venom yeah which I'm interested to hear about because you've already spoken to me a little bit about it the only way I can describe this is when you watched The Predator you yeah. phoned me immediately afterwards and you were like I don't know if I've just seen the best film or the worst film of the year, I think is what you said, yeah. basically. Yeah, 100%. And while watching Venom, I was like... Because I, I watched Predator, I didn't really get that from it. Okay. I, I, I didn't really like it. I don't know if I've reviewed it on here. Possibly not. I don't think you did. No. I didn't really like it, but... Understandably, I, I completely see why. Yeah. So I, I didn't really get where you were coming from with that. And then I watched Venom and I was like, oh shit, I totally get what Eddie means now. Because I'm watching this and it might be the best film of the year or it might be the worst... And I don't yeah. know where, where it... Like, I had so much fun with it, but some of it is shit. I'm seeing it, so much negative stuff about it. There's a lot of negative stuff about it. And the stuff that does work, I'm like... I don't know if it's working in a way where the filmmakers thought that this would work like this. Yeah. Or if it's just doing its own thing, and luckily it's working. I, I, yeah, honestly, see, that, that is exactly how I felt about The Predator. So, yeah. Like, I to, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you did get to experience a film that's doing this to you. Yeah, um, I gave Venom four out of five because I had so much fun with it, and also like I'm curious about the sequel that they set up in the post credit scene. Okay. So, the only shame with Venom is I would love to have seen Tom Hardy's portrayal of Venom go against Tom Holland's Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Which we're obviously not going to get because it's bullshit. Within the first twenty minutes of watching Venom, a thought went through my mind, which was. I really wish Sony would just sell all of their Marvel properties back to Disney and just, yeah. I, I want to see Venom done right. But yeah, that was my 100%. first 20 minutes. By the end of the film, I was kind of like, fuck that, Sony, give me more. <laughs> I just, you just want Sony to sell all the rights to every other Spider-Man except No, I don't want Venom. that. I do not want that. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just leave Venom. Have fun <laughs> with that, Sony. Everything else, yeah. So yeah, four out of five. I really want you to see it. I will, I will go and see but it. But I, I, again, I don't know if you're going to have like another Predator experience. Yeah, with or it if I'm just going to hate it. Or is... I might just love it, Liam. So hopefully we'll find out in a, in a future episode. I don't think I'm going to love it, listeners. No. Uh, then there was a, a Cineworld secret screening last week. Ooh. Yeah, this is one where you just show up and they don't really tell you what it is now. Yeah, and isn't it, is it, is it always something that's not yeah. technically out yet? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. always a, an advanced screening of something, yeah. but they just don't tell you what it is. So me, being me, I was like, well, it's October. Could be. Yeah. Maybe. Halloween, which I super want to see. Yeah. So I got my popcorn, sat down. The hate you give. The what? The hate you give. Okay. Don't I know don't, if... I don't know it. You d- No? No. Okay. It's um ad- adapted from a young adult novel, I believe. Okay. Um... It's it's the hate and then like the letter U and then give. Oh. So it spells out thug. It's from a two pack song. Okay. Um it's it's Thug Life and it's the hate you give little infants fucks everyone is what it all supposedly stands for. Okay, yeah, yeah. The trailer is essentially you're like, Oh, so this is a movie that's basically the news. It's about uh, an African American teenager gets pulled over by the police. Well, there's, well, there's like a African-American girl, not really a girlfriend, yeah. just a friend in, in the passenger seat. They get him out of the car for no real reason. Uh, he gets the police shot. officer, yeah, gets shot. And then it's all about like her having to... She was like the sole witness. So she's Got needed you. to testify about the police officer. So it goes to grand jury, however that works in America, right? Yeah. So it is, it is just like, oh, okay, you've taken the news and put it into a uh, film. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, they 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 hammered a point home, and it's it's an important point to make. It's obviously it's incredibly relevant socially and all of this sort of stuff, but it's also yep. really on the nose. And the acting's fine, all the performances are fine. I feel like the ending doesn't work because okay, they they obviously they've got their message, they get the message across, and they try and end it on like a happy note. And I feel like right. with this message it would be more powerful if you didn't give the audience such an easy out because when you go and see a film that has like a social point and yeah, then if it ends happy you can sort you can of forget go, it. Oh, okay good yeah good yeah there you go yeah that's resolved 
I like the 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 thing is Black Klansman came out a couple of months ago and was hitting very similar points and then like has a sucker punch of an ending that really yeah. gets you and just leaves you thinking. So this is basically like a a more kind of appealing to a wider audience. Like the same thing essentially, yeah. just not as effective. So it was like three and a half out of five because like the performances and everything was f- fine. Just Black Clansman, I think when I reviewed it, I gave it like four out of five, just because it hits you so much harder. And like, if you're going to watch one or the other, watch Black Clansman. It's so much more yeah. effective at what he's trying to say. Like this, Fair like enough. this should have done something really bold. It, again, it would have been obvious, and it would have been like it was taken from a news story. But I feel like it's the direction the film should have gone in that it was yeah. just like, oh, we can't do that. Audiences won't like it. I don't know if the book's the same. I haven't read the book. I don't know how it compares as an adaptation, um, but just going on the movie should have been stronger. Fair enough. And then lastly, it's TV show. Uh, I reviewed all of the seasons of Prison Break previously. We're now up to season Yay. five. Uh, My this, goodness. This, I think it was like a nine-year gap between season four and season five. Season four ends with the main character being killed off. Season five brings them back. And you spend half the season with them just justifying and explaining how they brought yep. this character back and why this character has never contacted any of the previous characters for the last nine years. Um, yep. The thing is, the, so the whole reason why we started watching Prison Break is because I'd previously seen up to season four and I hadn't finished season four. But I'd read about how it ended. Got you. So I was just like, I want to see how they get away with this. Yeah, yeah. They just about get away with it. Yeah? Just that. I found the season somewhat entertaining okay in a way that it's kind of mostly nonsense yeah and I, i'm i'm having to be quite careful about what i say because you can't spoil it and you also can't spoil any of the other seasons of prison break yeah yeah so i can't tell you who's really in it because that might give away no. who lives so yep there's literally it's... not a whole lot you can tell us it is fun seeing the characters that they do bring back and they don't bring back every character that was in prison break previously the ones that do come back, it's kind of fun catching up with them like nine years later and seeing where they're at with their lives now. Yeah, it's sort of like when you finish a book or a film or whatever that you love and you're like, oh man, I wish I could see what happened next. Yeah. So Prison Break kind of did that. Yeah. And it was also like, like that um, series, we've done, well, we did that before Sunrise before and we've got Before Sunset where it was nine years later. and Yeah. I, I like it when sort of they do bring these things back and they acknowledge, right, Here's how much time has passed, and here's what's happened in that time. Yeah, so I guess, I don't know, I assume you'll be able to answer this without giving stuff away, and we can always edit it out, if not. Like, does it feel like, because my worry with something like that, where there's like a nine-year gap, Yeah. and especially if they're bringing back a character that's... Presumed made, dead. Yeah. Does it feel like, because I, I feel like they'd focus too much on the, well, here's why he hasn't done anything for nine years, blah, blah, blah. So you get yeah. all that. But then I feel like to, there's the chance then that they'll just skip over everyone else and make it almost feel like everyone else has had this crazy life and then nine years where shit all happened and then he yeah. came back and it all went crazy again. Does it do that? Pretty much, sort of. Okay, not see, to, not the... to every character, but they, they, yeah, yeah. they do a good job of sort of justifying as well, like being like, okay, so here's why this person's had a quiet nine years and here's okay. where this person's at, like, you know. Yeah. As, as a hypothetical example, it could be... At the end of the last season, this character was set up for life and everything was going to go really well. And you start off this season and everything's gone to shit. And they're like, well, this is what happened. Yeah, got you. But they don't spend yeah. a lot of time on that either. It's just like mostly just brief exposition bits. Which is weird. It's, it's such a weird premise to do to a show. Like, have that big gap and be like, nothing really happened for nine years. Yeah. It was three and a half out of five. Like, me and Kat both found it entertaining enough. Not definitely not the yeah. weakest season, and if they want to carry on and do more, I'd watch it. But also, like, you, there is always going to be this element when they bring something back after such a long break that you're going to be like, cash grab. Yeah, oh, 100%. Like, yeah. The, the only reason I've done it is to make money. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is there more? Is, is season five the end of Prison Break? So far. It could go on if they wanted to, but season five came out, I think, last year. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So if they want to do more, there's the potential there. Okay, but this is the end of Liam's reviews of Prison Break for the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank fuck. It's, it's fine. I've, me and Kat have just watched... Uh, well, we're currently watching the third season of Fear the Walking Dead. So what I'm thinking of doing is 
getting to the end of season four and just grouping it all together and doing one review of Fear the Walking Dead season one to four. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah that's I'm the, also that's the thinking I'd... of doing the same with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah, that's cool. Because we're nearly finished season four of that as well. I think I'm up to date with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We're nearly there. Yeah. So I might just do a big, couple of big group ones coming up. There you go. Until we get good. back on top of the YouTubes and we can do exclusive ones and it doesn't really matter how much yeah. shit I watch. Exactly. Because... Most episodes, I probably have like seven or eight things to do in this part of the show. If only we were up to date with YouTube. You just Can think you how much exclusive content there would be. Oh, there'd be so much, Liam. If only one of us would either stop trying so desperately to do this weird it's task. It's nearly himself, there or... now. In a way that we're like, no, it over, isn't. We're, we're, we're over halfway. That's not nearly there. Imagine running a marathon, getting to the middle, and then being like, you're so close. <laughs> you're ne- I'm near it. Practically to the end. walking distance. I'm nearer to the end than I am to the start. Okay, well, hurry up. Housekeeping. Keeping house. Uh, you've done some housekeeping stuff. Liam, I have read volume 2, 3, 4, and 5 of Spider-Gwen. So, let, read it. Big uh, old yawn there, you read prick. It. Huh? <laughs> I said big old yawn there, you prick. <laughs> yeah. Listeners uh, might be aware, we had different opinions on Spider-Gwen. I love Spider-Gwen, Liam does not love Spider-Gwen. I didn't necessarily not love it. I just had issues you just didn't, with it. No, well, you didn't. You didn't love it. You okay. might have liked it, but you didn't love right. it. I love yeah. it. Um, does it get better? I think so. Yeah. Do you think I would think so? I don't know because I, I think you're intelligent enough to read these books, but then when you actually review them, I'm like, <laughs> maybe Liam's just not smart. Is the issue? <laughs> Could be an issue. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, so it's, one it's of the hard. issues I had yeah. is because it's a graphic novel of a series. Yeah. It does that in between two of the volumes. I think it's volume two and three. There's a gap where Spider Gwen did something in another series. Oh, that's yeah, okay. Which they tried to summarize at the beginning, and you can you can you very quickly realize what's happened, but it doesn't really get summarized or anything in the in the graphic novel. So there yeah. was a bit where I was like, oh, am I reading the wrong one? Because yeah, it you feels feel like, like you're missing jumped. something. Which as, yeah. as we have definitely discussed that is an issue I have with. I, like like these big like superhero graphic novels. Yeah. It, I I think that we've definitely discussed in the past. One of my problems is when you, you feel like you're missing content. Which, to be fair, is why even. one of the reasons it's one of the reasons I like Spider Gwen is because she's in her own universe compared yeah. to the main. There's a lot less chance of those crossovers happening. Yeah. Uh, I I think it might. I've not even looked to see how many graphic novels it was because I just wanted to carry on reading and couldn't yeah. be bothered to go and find them. So I, th- I think it might only be you know one graphic novel I'd have to read to catch up with it. Yeah, but other than that, it, I think it gets better. The story gets more interesting. It doesn't do, it doesn't fall into a lot of the same. Like, it's one of those things where it, it could quite easily fall into just doing Spider-Man stories, yeah. and it doesn't feel like it is. Okay, it that's feels good. like it's doing its own thing. Yeah, which I like, and it's just it's just cool that you get some really cool characters. Like, I'm trying to think of it. I'm trying to. Is it a spoiler to say if a character is in a graphic novel? No, I don't think I don't so. Even, I don't think so. Like. Basically, you get to see the Wolverine of that universe. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Which is one of my favourite scenes, because uh, someone says to Spider-Gwen, he has murder hands, Yeah. because of his claws, Yeah. Uh, and then tells her that his name is Mr. Murder Hands. <laughs> okay. And she turns around and goes, I've met one of them before, we're just going to call him Wolverine. And I was like, that's such a good... Uh, it was such a serious scene, with someone then being like, He's called Mr. Murder Hands. <laughs> which is such a good name. Yeah, that is. It's very Freddy Krueger-ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, it, it was cool. And he's like got a whole different backstory to the normal Wolverine. But okay. it's one of those like, oh, it's still the Wolverine story, but with all these different bits, which yeah, I really yeah. like. Fair enough. So uh, yeah, no, it's, it's... How would you rate you know, them? Probably a four out of five. You know obviously, me. Obviously, obviously. Always going from a four out of fives. Yeah. So it's, like, it's, it's a four and a half out of five if you really like it. And every now and again you get a five out of five. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Go read it if you like it. If you like volume one. Uh, yeah. You'll be happy to know, Liam. No more Spider-Ham. Oh, that's good. In it, so far. Yeah. There was a trailer for Into the Spider-Verse before yep, Benham. and he's in it. Yeah. As is Spider-Gwen. Yeah. I'm going to watch it because Spider-Gwen is in it. Not because of I. Spider-Ham. I bought. I bought when I was on holiday. As I was reading them, I bought a Spider Gwen hoodie because I was like, I love her so much. Uh, to be fair, I have seen these like on sh- on like online stores and stuff. Yeah, because it's it's like her such costume a white is quite hoodie a with a cool pink co- lining. Is it? 
Yeah, it's got the pink webbed lining. Yeah. And it's is it, to be fair, it looks quite cool anyway because she, her costume is quite a cool Spider-Man costume in my opinion. Yeah. But it's also because I secretly would um, like to be Spider-Gwen, so. Have you done anything else for housekeeping? Uh, no, don't think so. Have you? Uh, I've not done anything for housekeeping, but we have had some correspondence. Okay, hit me with it. First, I wanted to talk about... I've just got to find again. Um, so you sent me a message on WhatsApp saying, Frankie is behind on Nerd on Nerd, but wanted to say this. Yep. Uh, I don't know how to correspond... Let's start again. I don't know how to correspond to the show directly because, well, to be honest, I'm lazy and don't have Twitter, but I very much imagine if you died and Liam was to continue the show, he would hire or bribe someone to pretend to be you, but you just suddenly agree with all Liam's views and opinions. Yep, wouldn't surprise me. I think it's a genius idea. If anything, I don't know why we're waiting for you to die before we do that. (laughs) Well, if you've got the money to hire someone to replace me, go for it. Or bribe... With, with what could you possibly bribe people with? I don't know. You'd try and bribe them, they'd go, are you the wax guy? And then everyone would laugh, and you, you'd have to leave. Yeah, I would. Um, we've had some tweets. Who's the... Let me guess. Amanda. Yep. Yay! Uh, she said, I've only listened to a little bit so far, but it cracked me up that Croatia had to wait for news of the Great Magnet debacle. And then I think she got confused, because I said priorities, Amanda, which... I meant the priority was the magnet debacle overtook Croatia, but Amanda was going to say, ha ha, I'll get there. So I think she thought I meant like the priority for you should be listening to our episode. I don't know, the whole thing's confused me. I don't know what the magnet debacle is. When we spoke at the start of the show about the High School Musical magnets and you'd swap the oh, names. Oh, got you. Right, right, right. I'm up to date now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, no, it's fine, Amanda. You don't have to listen to our show religiously. Look, we took a month off. It's all good. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm. I'm I'm not saying for you, prioritise our show over living your life. I'm saying for for me, the priority yeah. was discussing the magnet debacle, not Croatia. Yeah. And you you must be able to see that that would be more important to Liam. Someone ruined his high school musical fridge. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to make that clear. Because uh, I figured a public like forum was a good place. I like, you, I like that you've waited a month to to tell Amanda that you didn't mean that. Yeah, I did. I could have responded via Twitter, but I didn't. Yeah. We talk to Amanda quite a lot on Twitter. So yeah. You do, you or you do other stuff with Amanda? Yeah, I didn't tell her on that either. This will be the first time she gets to hear it. I've been saving it. Uh, and she said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just got to the part where Liam says Crazy Rich Asians is the worst movie of 2018 and that to all the boys I've loved before is just fine. I'm just going to sit here stunned for a minute. Yeah. Um, I mean, this shouldn't shock you, Amanda, because... I, I, I point out a lot, Liam has very different views on the world to most other people. So he'll yeah. love films that everyone hates and hate films that everyone loves. But not in a, like, deliberate contrarian way. No, I don't think, yeah, you're not being a dick on purpose. Yeah, I'm not like, oh, this is going to make me unique and stand out. It's just, no. I'm broken. Yeah, you don't need to hate films to stand out, Liam. No. You can just tell everyone about your waxing and all this other shit and draw 30 second pictures of, of people that can't speak English very well that almost that sounds so much meaner the way you phrased it like that than how it actually was <laughs> yeah sure um, then Amanda said I really want Ellie to watch Crazy Rich Asians and hear her take as a fan of rom-coms because Crazy Rich Asians was the best studio rom-com I'd seen in years it does show rich life but there's so much more going on in that film and the portrayal of strong women in it is amazing and then I just kind of was like Fuck this. If, if if we're going down the like whole portrayal of strong women route, I don't have a leg to stand on. So I enlisted Cat. <laughs> I went, I need Cat to weigh in here because she also did not like the film. I called my backup. What you what did, happened. Liam, it's not even that. It's just that you were like it's almost like every time I think because you're sort of problematic in in yeah. the fact that you're ac- you'll accidentally say stuff that is maybe not the nicest way to phrase it. And a lot of the time you don't mean it the way it sounds, but you do yeah. say things. It, it can sound sounds worse like than you're... I intend, yeah. Yeah. But I think because you do that so much, you have now got to the point where you read anyone saying, anyone like mentioning something like that, you just immediately instinctively think, oh, I've made them think that I'm not a yeah. feminist or that I hate women. So immediately your response is, I have to prove I'm I that I don't hate women by getting a woman to say she didn't like the film either. But no, here's... This, that, right, sorry, let me just be clear. This isn't me proving I don't hate women. This is me going, no, I do hate women. Let me get you someone else who does to back up what I'm saying here. 
Right, okay. Well, Obviously, I don't mean like all women. I just mean the women in yeah, this film. You fr- see, this is what I mean, listeners. That's a good example of Liam saying bad something. phrase. Because what Liam did just say there was that he does hate women. Yeah. Which is, I don't think, what he meant. No, I meant the women in the film. Yeah, but the yeah. way he said it was definitely just... I hate women, and I yeah. needed to get someone else who hated women. <laughs> so I got Cat. <laughs> so so Cat went, thanks Liam, and then did an eye rolling emoji. Uh, she said, but yeah, Crazy Rich Asians was super average, and the only good female character in it was Aquafina. But then again, rom coms are not my thang, so I was probably never going to like this movie. <laughs> and then yeah. Amanda said, this went on. All right. You don't need to do it. This is not. We don't just get to a point. Where it stops being interesting because I imagine eventually this. Will yeah, get we to got a point that. In we got thread. that. But Amanda, okay. Amanda and Kat go on a, a little bit more, um, and then someone else chimed in. Uh, Chelsea uh, at J Chelsea W Chelsea hates that it's still summer. She also really liked the film, um, and so when Amanda said the portrayal of strong women in it is amazing, uh, Chelsea said that's what sets it apart for me. That movie is a freaking feminist goldmine. Even the characters you want to hate, they're still strong women. Nobody is the same either. Every woman is strong in a different way. It's so good. And it was after reading that one that I was like, oh, fuck this, I'm not getting involved. I'm going to get Kat to basically fight this argument for me. It's not an argument, Liam. You just didn't like the film. I hated it. Yeah, that's fine. With a burning passion. That's fine. Um, You can hate the film. Yeah, I did. I know. So, so I, I, I think you should see it, but... It is starting to come out of cinemas now. That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll either wait for it to come out on DVD or... It'll probably be on Netflix at some point. Yeah. Um, that was it for housekeeping. Fair enough. Uh, so we're only an hour and a half into the episode, so let's get to the uh, you know main part of the show. No, but to be fair, after not recording for a month, I'm quite pleased that we've managed to condense a whole month worth of stuff into an hour and a half, because that should have been really two episodes in that time. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of amazing, listeners, that we managed to drag out normal culture swaps, or not normal, like, housekeepings and catching up with to be as long as they are when this is a month's worth and it's only an hour and a half. Yeah. What I said made sense, Liam. I just didn't phrase it very well. No, we're both bad at phrasing things then. We're doing badly. Uh, culture swap. It started raining really heavily outside. Swap that's, my culture. Uh, that's not how it That's not how it goes. Swap <laughs> my culture liam this time we did spider-man the game on ps4 because you love spider gwen so much you wanted to be the closest thing you could get to that in a video game format which is this which is playing as a man fuck you men i'm surprised that spider gwen isn't like a, a skin you can unlock or something no it makes sense because if they did a reskin to a different character, they would still talk with Peter Parker's voice, which would be weird as shit. That is true. I think it would be more weird if you could play in a Spider-Gwen suit, but it was just Peter Parker talking. Yeah, okay. So, I get it. I wonder if like any of the add-ons are going to introduce, or if they do a sequel, if that's going to Yeah, introduce. exactly, yeah. Yeah. I've got hopes. Alright, full confession, listeners. We both completed this game about a month ago. When we recorded the last episode... We were discussing what should we do for the next culture swap and you weren't sure that I'd be able to complete it in time. Yes. Yeah. So to give you some context, we're recording this a month late and we both completed this like a week after we recorded the last episode. Yeah. And then neither of us have touched it since. Uh, no. No. So just, you know, full disclosure. Also, spoilers. That's going to happen. Yep, yeah, this is going to be spoiler heavy. All our culture swaps are. If you haven't played this game, which... Is one that I'm going to recommend you do. Yeah, it's a yeah. If, game. if you like, if yeah. you like Spider Man, if you like this sort of game, and there are there are spoilers that I think would be annoying to know if you wanted to play it before going into oh, 100%, it. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. Just tune out now. Yeah, just tweet us and say thanks. We don't have. To, okay, yeah, sure. Tweet us, thanks. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> let's go. Okay. What? So the, let's talk about the the big thing that you mentioned at the beginning which is this difference in completion. I, listeners, completed the main storyline of this game, so all the story missions. I completed all of the side objectives. Uh, I completed every task in the city, except for there are these random crimes that, as you're swinging through the city, randomly spawn. Uh, They're the only thing in the game that I haven't done, and I haven't gold-starred every challenge mission, which are like time trials. You don't need to. You know, 
get these points. No, it counts towards your percentage if you just do them. Yeah. I, I completed the game by getting 100% complete. Yep, which is not a requirement of the game, but sure. And I got all the trophies. Yeah. Which is Again, my own personal but... completion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what did you think of the story? Uh, I like it. It's a retelling of some aspects of Spider-Man's story that we know from other stuff. Like, it, it's... The the big bad of the game is revealed to be Doc Ock. I say revealed. It the see the way that the game was promoted and advertised, the big bad yeah. was meant to, well not meant to be, but like was suggested to be Mr. Negative. Negative. Yeah, which was an original yeah, I think creation a really good for the bit. game. I think um is he? I think so. I could be wrong, but I, I thought he was I don't think so. I thought Mr. Negative was I'm pretty positive Mr. Negative is real. Oh, okay. And from not real. From Spider Man. Oh yeah, no, he's he's in the comics. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. So he is not an original creation for the game. No. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone in the game is from proper Marvel lore. Yeah, okay. But yeah, the the way the like marketing made it seem was that it was going to be Mr. Negative is the the big bad, but yeah. also they revealed early on that there was going to be uh, the Sinister Six. Yeah. Not all of them, but there's like, you know, so Rhino, Vulture, Vulture Scorpion, uh, Electro, Shockwave. I don't think he's one of the six, maybe, but I don't. I don't can't remember who's in the actual six. Yeah, Scorpio. Uh, I think the only one missing is Mysterio. Yeah, who's one of the members, or was at some point. Whatever. But yeah, I think it's really cool that they didn't reveal that. Like you, you meet Doc Ock early on. As yeah, he's, he's original, a mentor. Like yeah, he, yeah. He, it's when Peter Parker is working for Doctor Octavius, uh, Octavius Industries. Yeah, and we, we have like, a, oh, an older games... Peter Parker, one who's like been Spider Man yeah, for a like... while, is out of high school. Yeah, out of college working yep uh and the game like so when you meet doc ock i was like oh cool that's doc ock maybe we'll get a bit in the game where like you deal with doc ock and yeah. it'll be a side character thing so it was quite a cool not twist but quite a cool surprise when yeah. doc ock suddenly becomes the big bad of the game yeah and i was like oh wow cool and i think they did a good job as well of like setting up the relationship with doc ock so that yeah when yeah. he does become the big bad you're actually invested in his character yeah, I mean, the ending of the game is g- good and emotionally... Yeah, because I messaged you, I was like, did work. you cry at the ending? Because I did. it is an emotional ending. Yeah, it's pretty Not brutal. just with Doc Ock either. No. Peter Another Parker thing becomes happens. an orphan. Well, no. He, he... She's his More of an orphan. <laughs> All right, okay. More... Peter Parker, beca- he's competing with Batman to see who's the most orphaned, and, yeah, and Peter and Parker's there. Batman's got his butler. Who's Peter Parker got now? Miles Morales. Just Mary Jane. And and Miles. And Miles. I liked that. Uh, I I didn't know Miles was going to be in this game. Nope, neither did I. I liked that he was, but I did read quite a funny thing. So, obviously, the majority of the game you play as Spider Man, and there's certain missions where you'll play as like Miles or you'll play as Mary Jane. Yeah. And I really think it was like it's so good to play a game where. You're a character that can swing around the city and do all this other stuff, and then you have like chunks of the game where you get all those powers taken away, and you just have to stealth around, powerless. I mean, I agree; those sections are annoying, but they are also short. They are and they're short. not difficult. No, they're not. They're that I I I learned in the second Mary. No, I I learned briefly in the first mission that you play as Mary Jane, and then realised full on in the second mission. But this game and its stealth sections, as those characters are. Uh, Pretty much just like, don't stop in the middle of the hall and then look at the guard and then sneak up to the guard who's staring at you and then push him or then he will go, hey, wait a minute, you're here. Because you can like, you can like run across rooms full of guards and not be caught. Yeah. Which is mind blowing. So you can do those sections pretty much just by running straight ahead a lot of the time and then occasionally making a noise so that the guard looks the other way. Yeah, exactly. It, it is simple. Um Yeah. They are probably the weakest part of the game, I think. I think early on they are. I think Miles' ones don't improve at all. But I think the Mary Jane one where you're working with Spider-Man... Yeah, that's, that's is not so quite bad. a good one. I think that's yeah. an interesting bit they did for that, where you're basically trying to separate guards as Mary Jane and, and then call calling. Spider-Man yeah. to web them up. Yeah. And that bit is quite fun. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, so the other thing is, uh, at the start of this game, Mary Jane and Peter Parker aren't together. Nope, yep, they have split up. Yep. Very sad. Um, also, uh, Miles... Do you know the one thing that I wasn't a big fan of? Okay, yeah. I love that Miles was in the game. Not a big fan of how he gets his powers in the game. 
I don't know what the actual Miles story is, so I don't know if it's true to the comic books or not. But well, I in the actual Miles it. story, if I remember rightly, like is Spider Man's not in it, is he? Like Miles is essentially so isn't it essentially the same origins? What do you mean? Like isn't Miles like on a school trip and a radioactive spider bites him? I, don't, I genuinely don't know. I could be wrong there, but I I, I don't I just well, thought it was I very mean, convoluted. I, it, it doesn't matter because it's but you, but yeah I uh. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't particularly mind. It's. I mean, like none of the Spider-Man getting his powers stories are ever particularly good. No, I mean, true. It's just he wanders around. A spider gets out and bites him. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, I am yeah. very curious because it, it has set up for a sequel, and this yes. ends. I think one of the post-credit scenes, because obviously there's post-credit scenes, is um, Miles and Peter discovering that each other has these powers. Yes. Which has some good funny jokes. Another thing I want to talk about in this game it is funny. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. But where Miles says, like, oh, Peter, I need to talk to you about yeah. something. Something's yeah. going on. And Peter's I'm like, experiencing some oh, changes. Shit, it's the talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Miles is like, no, what? No, I know about all that. And then just jumps onto the ceiling. And then Peter's yeah. like, oh, okay, jumps onto the ceiling too. Which is a weird way to be like, oh, well, I'm Spider Man. Yeah, it is. Like, if a kid's like, I've got spider powers, surely you just go, Oh shit, Mark! Like he doesn't seem surprised. He's just like, haha, jump onto the. I wonder if he like suspected. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It was good. It's still good. It's fine. I mean, if they it, do a sequel, it, yeah, I can imagine there'll be both Spider Man in it. And it has, a, if they do it well, it could be interesting, like a potential to open up a co op element to the game. I thought you, when you said open up a co op, I thought you meant like <laughs> the co op stores, and I was like, I don't understand why they don't open a co op together. <laughs> Oh, it's late, no. listeners. It's late. Yeah, it is. No, like a, they could be a co-op element to the game. Yeah, yeah, which would be quite cool. Yeah, if they do it well. Um, most of this game really good. Like graphics, really good. It yep. Runs really smoothly. Looks gorgeous. Um, yep, it's a beautiful game. The combat they've like drawn heavily from the Batman like Arkham series, I think. Yeah, yeah, which is fun. Which I, is I fine. think. Yeah, it's fine. I think the Batman one still does it more successfully. Like we've we've discussed, oh. there were a couple of niggles I had with it where, like, if you're trying to target a specific character to do like a special move yeah. on or take him down, it doesn't always work smoothly. No, the targeting targeting specific enemies is tricky, especially like for for that doing your special finisher. Or yeah. uh, I found like if an enemy was in the distance shooting rockets and I was trying to web him up to freeze him, yeah. Spider Man would lock on to like different enemies around me and I'd be like no I'm just I want to hit the guy that's shooting rockets at me yeah exactly I think so I think like if you compare the two combat systems the Batman one is still superior yeah probably but this this but is close not, I don't think that's a yeah I don't I mean, think it's they, a they, negative to Spider-Man because it's, it's still good in this game yeah and what they have done is they've they have made it different so the Batman combat he's obviously quite big and bulky and it's it's a bit slower with this obviously Spider-Man's a yeah. lot more athletic and moves quicker and like swings underneath people's legs and you have like you can yeah. swing into the air and start having like air combat and all this sort of stuff so it's a heavy the game is like keeps reminding you to do air combat a lot of the time yeah like I kept getting tips that were like if you're being surrounded by enemies try to single them yeah. out with air combat and I was like oh yeah that is how I should be doing it especially early on where yeah. I was trying to do it like Batman where I just like stay on the ground and occasionally hit someone into the air because they could block if they were on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And then later on, I was like, "Oh." But well, once you start be, like, unlocking more moves as well, it gets a lot easier to get people up in the air. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the first like half hour really struggled with the swinging, and then I got my head around it and figured it out. <laughs> yeah, we do need to talk about this, Liam. We do because yeah, because it was. I think it was going to be one of your negatives. No, no, I, I knew it was something at the time, I was doing At the time wrong. where you didn't know what was happening, and you were like, how is everyone doing this? And I, it's so, I, it, I'm so, i finding it so difficult. But I knew it was something I was doing wrong. Oh, okay, okay. I th- okay, fair enough. Yeah. Because, like, I just yeah, couldn't get my head The swinging right in this game is very, not very simple, that sounds like I'm being mean. The swinging in this game is quite intuitive. You pick it up quite quickly, unless you're Liam. Yeah, so to swing... And it's, yeah. You basically just have to press and hold down a button and release it, and that's swinging... What I didn't figure yep. is that the game's a bit smarter than I am. And it, like, let's say you just jumped off of a big building and there's nothing nearby to swing from. You can press down the button, but you're not just going to automatically swing. It waits yep. until you have something nearby that you could swing from, and then it yep. will swing you. And it just took me like half an hour to figure that key component of swinging out. 
Yeah, so what what you you were almost trying to play it like uh I think it's Spider Man on the PS one. Yeah, exactly. Where like you could literally like swing, swing off the sky. On the top of buildings you'd be swinging and Spider Man would be shooting his way into the air and there was yeah. nothing up there. Whereas this exactly. game is literally like, no, you you swing on stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, this game was smarter than I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is I think a compliment to the game that Yeah. I think I said this to you at the time. I was like, it's quite cool that it did so, it it almost like you were looking at it as a video game yeah. and trying to play it video gamey where you're like, oh, I can just swing wherever. And this game's like, no, it's not realistic, the swinging. Like, yeah. it, it cheats for you. Like, if you're yeah. swinging and you're going to hit the ground, it hovers you above the ground a little bit, tries to make it look like it's a normal swing, but you're like, yeah, there are points where it won't let you hit the ground because it knows it'll break the swinging stuff, so it just sort of hovers you over shit and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but it's, it, it's smarter than you were expecting, which is quite cool. Yeah. I, like, this is the thing, right? We have this a lot in in culture soft when I review stuff. Like I have issues with stuff, but like, I need to emphasize that these issues are so minor that yeah they barely count. But like one of the just small things that just niggled me was that a lot of the like glass buildings don't have accurate reflections in in the <laughs> in the glass. It's it's such a tiny minor thing. Yeah, but it's just again, something that I, I notice. Compliment. I think it's a compliment to the game. Again, yeah, because to find these negative points you're having to look at these like minor details exactly and that's like not even a detail that they could have really done anything about that's because we all had a chat about it yeah and it's just you know hardware issues and how much more effort it is to do accurate reflections yeah in a game this big i mean it's something that i think if they had a stronger machine behind it they could have done quite easily like the technology oh, yeah, yeah. is there when, like, the ps5 comes out yeah yeah um I, I read somewhere that apparently PS4 is entering its last cycle and they're getting ready to do the PS5. Yeah, I, I keep seeing stuff about that. I'd buy it. I'd stick with PlayStation at the moment. Yeah, same. I'm enjoying their output and their exclusives. There's nothing really that's come out massively on the Xbox that I'm like, oh, I'm jealous I don't have that. No, there were a couple of things early doors, but nothing since then really. No. Um. Anyway. Back to Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good cast of characters, like side characters and stuff that appear. Like there's a whole like um, side quest with Taskmaster that you get to fight at the end, yep. which is fun. Uh, I love the J. Jonah Jameson podcast. Oh my god, yeah. As you're swinging through the city, uh, you just occasionally get episodes of J. Jonah Jameson's podcast, which is very clearly based on, like, um, what's his fucking name? Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. It's based on that, like, whole thing where J. Jonah Jameson is almost this conspiracy theorist about Spider-Man. Yeah. Like everything that goes wrong in the city, you are responsible for in his eyes. And people ring into his show being like, oh no, like Spider-Man saved me. Yeah. And J. Jonah Jameson's just like, hang up on them now. Yeah. And like even like stuff you do in the game, like you might do a side quest and it's like, oh you have to go and fix the city's water supplies, for example. Yeah. Here we're like, I'm why was Spider-Man tankering? No, tinkering. T- yeah. yeah, tinkering. Tinkering with the water supply. Because yeah. he broke it and all this sort of stuff. It's great. That that one and... of my favourite ones was. Oh, sorry, no, go on. No, it, it kept popping up with a little message like, if you want to turn this off, you can. And I'm like, why would I want to do that? <laughs> yeah, I would stop. There were t- there were times where I'd get to a mission objective and stop and wait for the podcast yeah. to finish so I, could, so I didn't ruin it. Yeah. What was your uh, favourite? One, one of my favourite. It's uh, w- w- after you do um, one of the lab objectives where you swing through like these clouds of smog. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's an episode of the podcast where J. Jonah Jameson is just like, why was Spider-Man swinging through through smog clouds? That doesn't make sense. He's clearly a, a weirdo. And he's just like, it's not even like he thinks you're doing anything. He just thinks you're weird. Yeah. You're breathing through the smog. Yeah, exactly. Which, as you're doing it, Spider-Man is like, I don't like doing this. Why do I have to inhale these fumes? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, was just, it was a fun game. It didn't overstay its welcome, which is another issue I have with, with games we've done in the past. Witcher 3, for example. Yep. Um, yeah. I thought it was a really it's good game. It's long length. enough, but not crazy long. Yeah. And it is that sort of game where you're like, yeah, you unlock new, new moves and stuff, but essentially everything that you need to complete the game, you pretty much have within the first like yeah. hour. Yeah, yeah. So the gameplay doesn't massively vary throughout, but that's not a bad thing, I don't think. No, yeah, that's fair. Because it's fun. Like, I, think, I think some stuff can change slightly in terms of as you unlock new skills, like, like we were saying earlier with the whole like, it becomes easier to put enemies in the air. Yeah. So like your playstyle might switch from more ground based stuff yeah. to air based combat. And then like like so the the way you unlock powers in the game is you, you either unlock your abilities as you level up. Yeah. Uh or you can unlock gadgets by doing side missions 
which you can then upgrade your gadgets to make them better. So then you might do more gadget stuff, or you unlock suits, which give you like a suit power. Yeah. Which the one of the cool things this game does is you unlock a suit which gives you the design of the suit and then the suit power, and you can mix and match those. So if you have a suit that you really like the look of, yeah. but you prefer a different power, the ability to like generate well Doc Ock tentacles out of your back, it lets you some put of that the with whatever suit you want. Some of the abilities are shit. Like there's one that is uh, oh, yeah. you, you can insult. Does it doesn't insult? Yeah, but that's that's deliberate because that's the uh, comic book suit, which yeah. is you literally become a cell shaded character. It's the best suit. And you just, it, honestly, uh, I disagree. But no, I loved it. As soon as I unlocked it, I was like, "This is the new suit." And I, the thing is, before it just that, doesn't fit in with the rest of the game. That's what I love about good. it. That's what I love about love it, though. It's so that's good. how you are in the real world. You don't exactly. fit in. Exactly. Well, the suit I was having before, you can unlock this suit where it's a, like a white suit. And he has like a skull that flames as a head. Yes, yeah. And I unlocked like that. The Ghost Rider suit, yeah, basically. I thought it was awesome until there was a cut scene that was supposed to be quite emotional that I couldn't take seriously with a flaming skull Spider Man, where like him and MJ have like a huge argument and stuff. And I was just yeah. like, nah, I need to go back to a more traditional suit because it's ruining the cutscenes having this like flaming yeah, skull. Yeah. But having the cell yeah, shaded one cool. was awesome. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. I, I do like that. In the cutscenes, you wear whatever suit you're yeah. currently wearing. Uh, the only time that doesn't happen is right at the end, before the final fight. You yeah. get put back into the damaged suit, I think. Or... Yeah. No, you get put into the white spider, which is like the Doc Ock, the suit that he built for you. Yeah, that's right. What did um? What was your favourite suit? Uh, I spent the entire after I lo- unlocked armored suit Mark Three. Yeah. Which is like this red helmet, sort of almost like medieval armor looking, but looks light i wore that for the entire game and uh that didn't have many points where it sort of broke the flow of the cutscenes, except one where uh you're teaching miles how to punch and yeah. he accidentally punches you in the face and that suit has a fully armored faceplate. <laughs> so miles Morales punches spider-man in the face who they goes ow and i was like no no no! you're wearing a face made of metal yeah miles will be hurt that makes sense uh, what, once you unlock the final suit, mm. like the story suit, the Doc Ock suit, yeah. the black one, yeah. with yellow, I've been wearing that because that one's quite cool. I, I wore it for a bit, but then I went back to the Cell Shade ones. I, just, I love it so much. I like, probably my favourite thing about the game, in all honesty. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. It's I, I like, sure weirdo. Listeners, I cannot emphasise enough how fucking cool this suit looks. And it is because it stands it out fine. against this like realistic environment, having a little Cell Shaded dude running around. Amazing. Of course. It's so good. It's just, uh, I loved it. I don't know what else there is to be really said about this game. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any like major. Yeah, I mean, we have got to cast our minds back like three, four weeks to when we played it last. I get. Well, I guess there's cool stuff like, like you were saying, how they're setting up sequels and stuff. They're setting up cool. uh, Miles stuff, obviously becoming the, yeah. the new Spider-Man. Then yeah. you've got the Harry Osborn Green Goblin or Hobgoblin, depending yeah. on which one he is. Yeah. Which was quite a cool. Like obviously something was happening because they have this whole storyline where no one's seen Harry. He's for gone off three to years. Europe. He's, yes, he's yeah. touring Europe. Yeah, but then you slowly discover that he isn't. Yeah, he's got this. Illness uh, there's that his also. Had. Yeah, yeah, and so he's becoming some sort of symbiote Green Goblin thing. Yeah. Uh, I also liked how much like side lore and references to stuff in the comic books were scattered around the world. Yeah, like the stuff that wasn't important in any way like if you're in when you go to norman osborne's penthouse yeah. and you're looking around and you see all that stuff you can look at a mask that is sitting on his desk which is the iron patriot mask from secret avengers where he became iron patriot which is a mixture of captain america and iron man okay and it's that helmet yeah and i was like that's such a like it's not obscure yeah but someone playing the game who looks at that's just gonna be like oh it's just a yeah i didn't helmet. know that yeah and I was like, holy shit, that's Iron Patriot. That's cool as shit that they put this in here as a reference. Yeah. And there's like loads of little stuff like that. Well, like you can go around. So one of the like side quests is to take pictures of certain things. And that will pick yeah. up a lot of them. Like, So an, an obvious one is there's the Avengers Tower is there. Yeah. But also like there's Hell's Kitchen. So you get to go and see like Nelson and Murdoch. Um, yeah. Like they're building uh, the, the bar, uh, Josie's. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Jessica Jones, yeah. her like apartment and like her investigations, alias place. There's th- th- there is so many little tiny things like that. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, I... like 
I love as well the backpacks. Yeah. Uh, which I didn't. The backpack getting is fine. It's a collectible, whatever. That's how they work. Yeah. But I love that for every backpack you get, you can look in your collection and there's like so much. There's like a, a chunk of Mys- Mysterio's mask. And then when you look at that, Spider Man tells you something about Mysterio and there's like yeah. a little story about it. Yeah. Like there's so much detail put into all this side stuff. Yeah. That's just awesome like there was a point where i was like oh I'm, i don't want to play anymore but i don't want to turn it off so i just sat there and read a bunch of them because i was like oh what's this one? Yeah. Oh, a chunk of rhino's horn and then it talks about Rhino. oh yeah like, as soon as i unlocked them I'd, I'd listen to the little bit that they talk about yeah yeah um i did have something one. one thing that i did find again minor but there was a couple of uh audio bits where if you do a certain thing it'll play an audio and they weren't very varied. They'd be like two or three, but you would be doing something consistently, like a lot. So you'd hear the same two or three little audio clips a lot in the game. Yeah. But again, it's a it's a minor thing. What sort of stuff was that for? I'm trying to think. Um, like when you complete like a side quest or something. Um, oh, okay. Or like one of the th- the th- the random crimes, he'd be like, "Oh well, I'm cleaning up New York," and there would yeah, literally right. be like maybe three of those, so you'd hear. Like a variation of that, so much. Yeah, but it, again, it's a minor thing because it's such a good game. Yeah, another thing that's Everyone good is you can um, you can high five passerbys, which is fun. Yeah, you can also uh, when you're walking around on the street at different points in the game, like towards the end of the game, enemies start to spawn on buildings and stuff and fight you yeah. randomly, which is cool because it gives you an extra thing. But also, like things will happen on the street that aren't random crimes that are because of the story, like. There's a point where Mr. Negative has started converting random people into yeah. negatives. And yeah. if you're walking around on the street during that part of the story, random people can turn into negative versions and attack you. And I was like, because yeah. I've been swinging around the whole game, I just happened to be walking around at one point and was like, oh, wow, I wish I'd been doing this the entire game just to see what else can randomly happen. Yeah. There was something else I was going to talk about that I've now forgotten. No Venom? It would be cool if they brought Venom into the sequel. Yeah. Well, that, I think if they were to do a sequel, it would be you've got Venom. Mysterio, yeah, uh, Green Goblin stuff, yeah. There's, I mean, there's tons of Spider-Man villains that they can use. So hopefully, yeah, exactly. we'll get a sequel. I think this game sold so well that we've kind of got to get a sequel almost. Yeah, I would be surprised if we didn't. Yeah, because not only did it sell well, it got real positive reception as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely the best Spider-Man game that's ever been released. Yeah, I, I I'm not surprised by that. It, it, consoles are at a point now where they can give you like the the hardware to make a game feel like you're Spider Man, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, like, I it is the full uh, what, New York like... City without loading screens in between different areas of the city. Yeah. Oh, uh the other thing that I quite liked is um so one of the like side quests is to go around and, and take photos of like important landmarks and stuff. But then you can yeah. also there's secret photos that you can unlock. And that was quite mm-hmm. fun because again you'll get a little line um for some of them, I think. Actually, I don't know if you do for the secret ones. It might just be the main ones. But it's yeah, still, I've done, it's I've like done a couple of the secret ones. Yeah, but... it's like additional content essentially. But again, yeah. you don't need one hundred percent. But if no, you were, like, I only I did love them this because game. I only I only started doing them because one of the perks you can unlock is it reveals yeah, secret same. locations when you're near them. And I was like, oh, okay, well I'll do that just to see what they are. And yeah, I was like, oh, they're like cool references and stuff. Or like some cool graffiti or something. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it was just super fun. It's a really good game. It is. It's really fun. Really enjoyable. I've not, the fact that we haven't gone back and touched it, I guess, is maybe... No, yeah, but it is that sort of game, I think, where... Once you're done, you're done. Yeah. It, oh, until they bring uh, out the... DLC. DLC. Which, which is... We've got three coming out, I think, and the first one's meant to be this month? I think or next so. Month? I think it's this month, I think. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what they add. Yeah. I'll be keeping an eye out I don't for know. Them. I don't know how much they'd have to add for me to be like, this is a good DLC. Yeah. I don't really... Do a lot of DLC stuff. No, I, I, the, DLC is hit and miss with me. There's some that, like, there is DLC that is almost as good as the base game. Like, uh, stuff for Bioshock, when yeah. they did their DLCs, was always good. Uh, Fallout 4 and, like, all the Fallout series when they get DLC. Uh, same with Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Then there's, I, I just thought of one that was like, oh, uh, Red Dead Redemption yeah. has Undead Nightmare, which yeah, that's is right. one of the best DLCs I've ever played. Yeah. Like just totally converts the game into an undead horror story, yeah, which is amazing. So like, I'm hoping for something. Obviously, it won't be as big as that, but I want something that's like a cool story and not just throwaway trash. I, 
I need you to just do what you did with, with American Psycho and just sit down and finish The Last of Us because I want you to play the DLC for The Last of Us because I think it might compete with your favourite one. Okay. It's so good. But you need to just like just do an American Psycho where you're like, right, I'm just going to dedicate some time to just getting this done. Yeah, fine. At some point. Um, I will. What would you give Spider-Man out of five? I think it's probably a 4.5. Okay. Like, Can't it's not perfect. Argue. There are issues with it, but I think yeah. it's an amazing game and everyone should play it. I'm going to go with a four out of five. Like, really good, okay. really enjoyable, but like I said, it, it was a good length, but maybe a little on the short side because there isn't a lot to go back and do. It's not like... So some, yeah. some games, for example, like you'll do like the story, but then there'll be like an online mode or there'll be... I don't know. Other things. I mean, this, this, but this game did have a lot of that. You just, it just doesn't limit you to doing it at the end. It's like you can do this whenever, and you did it all at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, true. So I don't know if that's. But like, yeah. even doing all that is what I'm saying. It still doesn't add a lot of time. Like, so I, I've done all those like random crimes and all that sort of stuff. Like every single area, I've got 100 percent in. It didn't add a lot of time to my, like maybe five hours total to the playtime. I haven't even. I don't know what my playtime is. I should have done that. Yeah, I didn't check. I didn't check mine either. But um, I feel like it wasn't long because I think playing it like probably regularly, like maybe an hour or two a day, probably finished this in about three weeks, two, three weeks. I think I did it in two weeks, but that was all weekend time or primarily weekend time where I'd spend a Saturday just playing it. Yeah. So that's what I mean. If if you were just dedicated to just, I just want to complete this story, probably get done in like 10 to 20 hours. Yeah, I get. Yeah, that's fair because the story did feel quite short towards the end when I was like, I need to power through the story to the podcast. Yeah. But yeah, still enjoyable. It's probably yeah. one of the better games I've played that was released this year, but I don't think I've played a whole lot of games that were released this year. Well, we've got Red Dead 2 coming out. Yeah, but I've not played the first one. You're an idiot, because it's maybe going to be one of the best games of the year. I've, I just really want them to remaster the first one and release that for me to catch well, up with. Well, they're in the middle of releasing the second one, so they're not going to. Yeah, it's annoying. Liam. Yeah. You know what time of year it is, right? Yeah. It's your, it's your favourite time of year. It's it's the time where I tell you how I'm doing with my DVDs. No, I was going to say it's Halloween and what are we going to do next time. But sure, we can do the DVDs now. I've, it's only because I've done well with them lately. Liam, last yeah. time I left you, you were on 1,083 DVDs. Seven below your goal. Actually, eight below your goal. So yeah. you, you're like on track. Everything's going beautifully. Liam, yes. how many DVDs... Do you have in your pile? 1,061. Yep. Holy shit, Liam. I think, well, admittedly, it's been a month, so, you know, let's not toot your own horn too much. But that is a change of 22 DVDs, buddy. I've made a mistake. It's incredible. What was the mistake, Liam? I've made a horrendous, horrific mistake. How many DVDs have you bought? So. Savvy, Liam, just, have you have you bought more than thirty? Savvy, no, have, you haven't. Savvy, the yeah. bastards have released a box yeah. set of something that I've been okay. wanting to do for years now. You know me; yeah. I like to start at the beginning of something and work my way through, right? Yeah, you do. Savvy have released a um, Disney Classics Complete Movie Limited Edition box set, and I. I pre-ordered it and I was like, oh, that's fine. It's like, it's, I was like, look, I've seen a bunch of Disney films already, so that won't count to my, my total because I already own them. So it's not like, that's not how I yeah. work it, right? So like, I was probably going to be like an extra, like, I don't know, say 10. But I've just counted how yeah. many films are in this box set. How many are in the box set, Liam? 56. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> how have you... <laughs> Liam... I was so close. You were doing I'm so, so well. close. I'm, I'm, How have you done this? I, I, um, I didn't think. Oh, I've literally just it counted. Arrive now. before New Year. It's meant to come out on the third of December. So you've got a hope that it gets delayed yes. for a month. Yes. So you don't fail the task. Yes. Jesus. Because Christ. I was actually right before I ordered this. At one point, I was like, "Shit, I might actually get to below a thousand by the end of this year." Yeah, because I've got like sixty one left. You think that's I could I could probably knock out roughly a film a day, and that would get me below below the threshold. Yeah, yeah. But instead, you bought a box set of fifty six DVDs. Mm. 
and there's a mistake that I'm seeing now. Yeah. Because like it's got I do, I... it's got things like Moana in it, um, which I've already seen, I own. That wouldn't count yeah. as a like to me that doesn't count as an unwatched film. No, yep, yeah, that's fair. Um th- there's a few like that, but I reckon if we're being brutally honest, I'm probably gonna be adding about forty to my total when this arrives. Yeah, which just as a little preview of what that would mean, Liam, is you would be on one thousand one hundred and one again. What's my what's how the goal? Have you, how have you done this? One thousand and ninety one. So you'd only be ten over your goal. So this is still possible. It's still yeah, because yeah. But Liam, here's the thing, right? You were doing so well, and then you did this, and this has sort of fucked you a little bit. But you've still got like three months, two months, two and a half months. Yeah. You could easily do this again. You might just fuck yourself. To this be honest, is the issue with this challenge, Liam, is you could always do it. But every now and again, you just fuck yourself. Yeah, like, I'll be honest. If, if if that Studio Ghibli box set became a sensible price, I'd be way tempted. And that's like another 20. So yeah. this is the thing. Like, my undoing, as we've discussed in the past, is the HM35 for 30s. They're evil. But also, these, like, limited edition box set comes out. And I'm like, well, it's limited edition. I have to move fast on it. And, like, I've so... I tried to do all the Disney films at uni. And I got to like the world war two ones yeah so not not for like they released a bunch in world war two um that didn't really go very far like uh Sally dos amigos and the three caballeros and make mine music all came out like between 1942 and 1946 yeah um yeah it's just it's one of those it's a, it's a hard one right because a part of me it's is not, really excited thing, to do this box your, set this isn't your undoing these box sets aren't your undoing your undoing is that you're an addict a film addict. Yeah. Yeah. Just, no, no. But you're not just a film addict because you get film addicts that don't own a thousand and sixty-one unwatched DVDs. You're an ad- addict to buying films. Mm. The thing is, I was so excited about potentially getting to below a thousand by the end of the year. Yeah. Imagine how proud of you everyone would have been. Not only that, but also the excitement of that was compelling me to watch more films. Yeah. And now I'm just like, well, fuck it. <laughs> You could still do it. Even if you added 40 films to your DVD tally, you would only be 10 away from doing it. Yeah, that's just doing the, the achievement, which wasn't getting under 1,000. That was just getting below what I started, right? Yeah. Which is just... It's a nightmare. It's, I, I it's Honestly, insane. I wish... You have a problem. I wish they'd either not brought this box out or brought it out in January. But you know the moment you'd have told me about it, I'd have just restarted the challenge again. Yeah. You buying this box set it would have been a negative no matter what. But I will get to watch all the Disney films, which I am excited to do. Yeah? I, I mean, Disney's important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you know me, I'm a bit of a completionist. But... Well, it doesn't include all the sequels, so you don't get like um, like Return of Jafar or like the three like Lion King sequels that there are. And... Yeah. So it's not as complete as it could be, and I think we should be thankful for that. I mean, I don't care. This doesn't matter to me. What are we doing like next time? I said time? at the beginning, Liam. Whatever happens, I get a good outcome. Either I get to be proud of my mate, and I get to be like, "Hey, I have, by doing this challenge, I've helped you reach a goal," or I get to be like, "You failed completely. Look at you, you idiot." I don't remember what the outcomes of the challenge were. Like there was a thing. I'm gonna look it up, aren't I? That was the deal. I'd go back and look and figure it out. What? I think if I think if if I win, you ha- I get to pick the next thing you watch out of your pile. Oh, I think about like the next five things or something. Oh, yeah, because it was more than that. Yeah, yeah, it was, I think it was five. Yeah. And then if you win... I can't remember. I, I, wasn't it something like you get to pick a mumblecore that we watch or something, or some bullshit? Well, like like you, you, maybe you had to buy me a film, because I remember there was a bit where we were oh, like, possibly. if I win, it doesn't really help, because you're just feeding the, the problem. Yeah. <laughs> what we should have done, if, if we ever do this challenge again, it should be, if, if you win, you get to pick as many films as it would take me to actually achieve the goal that oh, I that set. Been, yeah, that would have been good. Yeah, that could have really fucked me badly because you could be like, "Here's your next forty films." Now, Disney box set that you really wanted to watch? Fuck that. What would have been really good is if we'd said that if when we got to the end, I got to sell as many of your DVDs to get down to the target number. You get to keep the money. I just get to sell out of that on watch pile, and you don't get to see what I sell. I just get to sell them and then give you the money. That would be horrendous. I would hate that so. I mean, much. it would have been interesting. 
because it would have been interesting to see how long it took you to see which film had been sold. Yeah. It could have been like years later, you'd be like, oh, on my list I've got that I own this film and I don't. I'd have probably just been like, oh, I must have lost it in a move or something. <laughs> it would have been like, anyway, what are we doing next time? It's Halloween, Liam. Spooky scary. We're doing a film called Brain Dead, Which is a horror comedy. Which Liam has chosen. We've both yeah. chosen it, but Liam sort of recommended it. I've seen it before. Uh, it's a Peter Jackson film, which is why I think it'd be yep, fun for us to is, watch. Yep, that would hopefully be good. Yeah, I, we'll see. Again, this is another one of those ones where like, young Liam liked this, so it could, so it could be a, another feast. There's a high chance it could be shit. Oh, God. But it was highly rated on, on Letterboxd, so maybe... Yeah, true. Not everything that young Liam liked has turned out to be shit. No, just a lot. Yeah, just some things. So join us next time for a... a Spooky, spectacular episode. Yep. Until then, any final thoughts, Ellie? How do they get in contact with us, Liam? That's my final thought. Just, I want to know how people get in contact with us. They can tweet us at nerdonnerd or Facebook us at facebook.com forward slash nerdonnerdpod. They can email us nerdonnerd at gmail.com. Nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Yeah, that's right. Uh, YouTube us, just search nerdonnerd or one word, we should pop up. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes and a rating, preferably five stars. Why not? It doesn't hurt you. It helps us, apparently. Uh, that's it. Bye. Bye. Bye.